in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Bless the Lord. Extol Him. Let Him know He's the reason why you are not dead. Let Him know you are the reason. He's the reason why your life is the way it is. For your mercy, O oh God. For your faithfulness. For your kindness. I want you to think of times when you were delivered whilst you were not even praying. Times when the mercies of God spoke for you. Hallelujah. Please everyone, just whisper your gratitude to the Lord. Sometimes we get so familiar. The worship team just led us through a session that I don't just want us to come out of casually. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. It's my song to you. Thank you. Thank him. You will be arrogant if there's nothing to say thank you to him for. Lord, you have been faithful. Faithful. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness It's morning by morning New mercies I see All I have needed that thy hands have provided Hold on Take note of what provided it Thy hands has provided not my ah. gifts have provided hey. all that I needed thy hands has provided great is thy, thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness Lord of God is a mystery to his sons a revelation for he has made us a kingdom and priest to reign on the earth forever join us as we expose you to this revelation through God's servant Apostle Joshua Selman a returning teenage of international replicating the fullness of God's life on earth Let's lift our hands everywhere, inside and outside. I honestly want you to bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh, oh my soul. And worship His holy name. Sing like never before. Sing like never before. Oh my soul, oh my soul, and worship. I worship your. Sing it two more times. 
play the instrument softly i want us to just meditate in one minute the bible says bless the lord O oh my soul bless the lord extol him let him know he's the reason why you are not dead let him know you are the reason he's the reason why your life is the way it is for your mercy O oh God for your faithfulness for your kindness I want you to think of times when you were delivered whilst you were not even praying times when the mercies of God spoke for you hallelujah Please everyone, just whisper your gratitude to the Lord. Sometimes we get so familiar. The worship team just led us through a session that I don't just want us to come out of casually. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. It's my song to you. Thank you. Thank him. You will be arrogant if there's nothing to say thank you to him for. Lord, you have been faithful faithful great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness it's morning by morning new mercies I see all I Has provided. provided. Hold on. Take note of what provided it. Thy hands has provided. provided. Not my ah. gifts have provided. Hey. All that I needed, thy hands has provided. Great is thy, thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord. On Christ the solid rock I stand, truly all on the ground is sinking sand.
Jesus. We are calling your name so that the nations will not confuse who is the doer of these things. It is possible for your people to believe Joshua Selman is the doer. It is possible for your people to believe it is the wisdom of man. But we call that name Jesus. Jesus. The wonder walker. Jesus. The healer. Jesus. The restorer. Jesus. The mighty one. Jesus. The redeemer. Jesus. The baptizer. Jesus, the imparter. What's that song? Take it higher for me. Just one more song and then we'll sit down. You have captured my heart, consumed my heart with your love. We're singing this to Jesus, a love song. You have captured my heart you my heart my heart be your love koinonia lift your voice lift your hands you and let's sing this song to him my heart, my heart consume my heart, my heart be your love hey, hey, hey. if all One i more say time, is jesus say you are captured my heart my heart Consume my heart. Yes, the part of the song I love. If all, if I, all say, I say is Jesus, sing that name. If all I say is Jesus, 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 that's all I need now. If all I say is Jesus, if all I say is Jesus, if all I say is Jesus, the Savior, the Healer, Jesus. That's the more Christ, than enough. The living one. Somebody say, if all I say is Jesus. If all I say is Jesus. 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 That's more than enough. If all I say is Jesus. If all I say is Jesus. If all I say is Jesus. 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 That's more than enough. I want you to just whisper that name to him. Let the nations hear you say it. Some of you have not called that name in a long time. You have called talent. You have called gifts. You have called money. You have called men. But you've forgotten. You've even called God. But you've not called Jesus. Let your spirit get used to that name again. The name that is given unto men. By which men are saved, soteria, healed, That's changed. That's the name that heals cancer. That's the name that delivers, the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The name of the Lord is not the identity of a God, it's a strong tower. The name of the Lord is a strong tower, dependable, reliable. Hallelujah. Jesus, Son of God, I believe in you. Just play it lightly. I believe in you. The meeting is already on. This is the person we introduced there at night. Jesus, the Son of God, I believe in you. I Hallelujah. Listen, you. there is Jesus, the footballer, there is Jesus the activist there is jesus the mexican so that we don't mix this thing the, we are talking about the son of god they called paul and and barnabas they said one was zeus and hermes they were in the similitude of sons of god but he said i saw the fourth man in the fire and his fashion was like the son of god like 
the son of god let me tell you the truth don't you ever think we're wasting our time if if you come into god's presence the protocol is that in all your ways you must acknowledge Ac don't you ever call acknowledging him a waste of time i believe in you let's just sing it one more time to the glory of your name jesus son of god i believe in you i believe in you tonight lord be glorified in this place we hand over this meeting tonight lord there are sick people in this place trusting you for miracles there are oppressed people trusting you for breakthroughs who but you is able to wipe the tears of men who but you is able to bring your word with power we have acknowledged you before the nations let them know unashamedly that jesus is the doer of everything that happens in this house he is the healer the restorer the changer the transformer jesus the merciful jesus the judge jesus the just jesus the faithful jesus the provider we acknowledge you tonight spirit of the living god you have come as a representation of that glorious presence we ask oh god that you will bless your people let this not be a ritual a waste of time in the name of jesus christ hallelujah you see brothers and sisters when we do these things it's not an invention of man to run a service everything that is of god god does not leave men to guess how to do it there is a pattern are we together your own is to discover that pattern and foolishly sometimes childlikely walk in it results are for children in the kingdom those who can be childlike enough and say lord if a dance is the secret to this breakthrough i will dance so if my tears is the secret i will cry hmm. If it takes my worship, I will give it. If it takes my obedience, I will give. This, this human invention will never give us the kind of results we are looking for. He said, let the little children come to me. He said, and do not forbid them for, for such. In other words, that is the template. That is the state it takes to receive from God. You see the miracles that happen in this ministry? When I sit down and I listen to the testimonies, let me tell you this. I am as not necessarily surprised, but I am as blessed as those who are listening. I also come looking forward to hearing what God has done. Because let me tell you something. God doesn't have an advisor. So when we come to him, we, we wait to see his wisdom what he has done and he's doing in the life of men nicodemus came to jesus in john chapter 3 by night he said rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from god he said for no man that means this result is not in the realm of men no man can do this thing however if god be with that man then it can be possible so the secret is god we know that thou art a man sent from god for no man no man can cause the barren to have a child no man can cause hiv to go brothers and sisters if it was easy even herbalists would not be looking for customers as as fetish as it is they too they are trying so when you see us worship him like this and sometimes do foolish things you see people rolling that's how it is so that's the ancient secret stupid people in his presence who do foolish things foolish enough for them to fail and he picks them up because you see when you declare to god that you don't have any other option you put pressure on his integrity 
and you commit him hallelujah if this is all we do this service to just sing and dance and roll i tell you we can roll from left to right and that's how someone will be rolling his reproach away never participate when you are in a service and there's a time for extreme worship especially when god by his sovereign hand begins to extend there is a way you know that this one is no longer what was rehearsed this is god extending the spirit of god is now coming in because he knows what you are looking for and he's directing you on the path to get it the flesh will fight because your reputation will come in the flesh will fight because you say i'm tired oh, bring the rema god is not in this place as a tenant he's here as the lord the master the owner the guide we only follow unashamedly hallelujah praise the lord god bless you and the lord honor you please sit down we're going to be very brief tonight tonight i want to minister to people um so i'll be very i'll just wrap up the gift of the spirit very quickly i sensed a very strong grace to minister to people and that's what i want to do um very briefly we'll just wrap it up and so i, I want it to be very very sensitive i want to bring out a prophetic word that the lord gave me listen this is especially please listen this was on tuesday 9 24 a.m in the morning tuesday 17th this is what the lord told me and listen especially worshipers he says restore the ministry of the stringed instrument restore the ministry of the stringed instrument i called them and i said we should get me a guitar restore the ministry of the stringed instrument there is a move of god that the stringed instrument will bring this is what god told me restore the ministry of you see this thing you see you people don't have an acoustic guitar here bring it jesus will lift up your name please quickly jesus will lift up your name Jesus, we lift up your name. Jesus, we lift up your name. Hallelujah. Now, please look up. You see, this thing you see is not an instrument. It's a formula. Spiritual things, spiritual things are formulas. The clash of the symbol is a formula the keyboard and the sound that comes out is a formula the string instrument was a mystery david understood he said praise him with the 10 stringed instrument are we together yes there is a sign that i can give you because i've not taught you to understand the meaning you would think i'm talking nonsense but the person i've trained to discern i can tell a jimmy every time you hear ha ha it means stand up you will not stand up because you don't understand so while you are playing the guitar your mind is unfruitful but your spirit in connection with the holy spirit understands the exact communication there was a move of god in this city that this instrument brought everybody was learning it whether they knew it or not they were not learning it by skill they were moved holy men were moved by the spirit to help him introduce a thing you see let me tell you we must be like the sons of issachar we must sustain an understanding to know when the spirit of god is moving in a certain way and this is what the lord spoke to me on tuesday i asked them i said you guys should look for a guitar quickly and bring it set this up and play something play minus where's david dam just or anybody just sit down let it let it join what we are doing and just play this he said restore the ministry of the stringed instrument the ministry that psalmistry the hallmark of psalmistry was not singing it was the stringed instrument there was something that david played it was a language that the demons understood and they left 
the Lord told me there is a move of the spirit that this stringed instrument will bring so wherever you have kept your guitar dust it even if it's three keys you can learn sit in the night and just play and sing and let songs come from the spirit there are no songs you will teach anybody you will even forget it the songs are for the lifetime of your worship at that moment when the worship is over you won't remember the song again there were realities captured from the spirit to help you take you see let's understand what the spirit is saying because when god is speaking like this there is an intention so he tells you by his spirit this is what i want to do this is how i want to move like i want to come to your house and i tell you that that I, I want to come to your house and you hear me telling you that i want to eat rice and chicken i have told you what i want to eat. it is left for you to honor me you can decide to cook yam and say i i made up my mind to, your cooking rice is a sign that you honor me because i told you this is what i want there is a move of the spirit i say it again there are nations over 45 47 nations hearing us following us i'm saying this to all it doesn't matter what time zone and what nation there is a move of the spirit that the stringed instrument will bring the grace that was on miriam it was miriam that wrote that song on the string instrument that i will sing unto the lord for he has triumphed gloriously to the point that the bible even told us in revelations that we will sing the songs of moses moses was not a musician but there was an order of the spirit there was something let me tell you the spirit of prophecy is one of the mysteries that are tied to the string instrument he said bring me a mistrel and while he played the hand of god came upon him and he said you shall not see wind you shall not see rain you shall not see wind you shall not see rain you shall not see wind where's the bidam he's gone he's not around just play up not you shall not see wind he's called the god of jeshurun it's a name not many people know the god that rides upon the wings he rides remember that when the angel came in the days of samson menoah he set a sacrifice it was through the sacrifice that the angel rose and went there are healings there are miracles i'm going to round up on the gifts of the spirit but i want you to be sensitive god wants to do something hallelujah god wants to do something any of the overflows it doesn't matter where just be sensitive just be sensitive be sensitive be sensitive i'm seeing like a crown of fire this is what i'm seeing coming on people's heads inside outside i'm seeing like a crown this is what the lord is showing me and this is taking people to another dimension the lord is saying you have encompassed this level it's time for you to be open to a new dimension you will never be the same never be the same it is by the spirit by the spirit there are limitations that has kept you this thing is like an enthronement it's not everybody but there are few people it's for you that's why you came for the meeting is a ranking in the spirit something is being deposited in your spirit man that will give you capacity let's just flow with the spirit adonai 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 there is no one like you zion's king incense rise hearts resound adonai 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 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm seen like a knife. Please just allow me to do my stupid. Is, is it all right if I just flow in the spirit? Is that okay? I'm seen like a knife. A knife. And this is like deliverance for families. I'm seen like a, not a sword, a knife. A knife. And God is saying he's bringing to end captivity. Captivity over families. He's bringing to end. It doesn't matter how long it is. It's like a knife. A knife is not warfare. A knife is sacrifice. God is saying there's something you have done. Your sacrifice has risen like an incense to the heavens. And God is responding to it tonight. Sacrifice. 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 I'm still seeing this knife everywhere overflow one two around everywhere God is visiting families there is something about your prayer you have been praying for months Lord will you not arise and God says I am still the God of Jeshurun the one that arises on the wings of the winds the God of Jeshurun Adonai, Adonai, church of Israel, Adonai, Adonai, there is no king just like you, rich and powerful of love, majestic throne of Zion's king. Incense rise, hearts be sound. Adonai, Adonai, Adonai. Hallelujah. Just one more prayer and then we'll sit down. Hallelujah. I'm seeing horses, chariots, chariots running, and the Lord is saying He's bringing His word to pass over people's lives. This is not everybody, but I'm seeing chariots chariots and i speak it by the spirit i speak it by the spirit i'm seeing chariots and god is saying he's bringing his word is is a chariot remember there is one that rides upon the horse in revelations he said his name is the word of god the one upon the horse giving a name that no man knew he had a name written upon his thigh fire came out from him and devoured them he said his name is the word of god we release performance we release performance grace for performance i don't know what god has told you but we release the grace for performance grace for performance there is a grace that reveals things but there is a grace that makes what is revealed happens there is a grace that reveals things but there is a grace that makes what is revealed happen grace for performance grace for performance hallelujah please sit down if you can Let's just be sensitive. Whatever position, just sit somewhere and let's just talk. God is doing something heavy this night. God is doing something heavy this night. I don't know who this is for, but the Lord is saying, I'm rolling away your reproach. I'm rolling away your reproach. I'm rolling away your reproach. Someone's reproach is rolling. I'm rolling away your reproach. I'm rolling away your reproach. That's what God is saying. I'm rolling away your reproach. I keep speaking like this because of what I'm seeing. I'm rolling away your reproach. 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 I'm seeing a family, no marriage. I'm rolling away your reproach. 
I'm rolling away your reproach. Please help them. I'm rolling away your reproach. I'm seeing someone you have spilled over like twice. I'm rolling away your reproach. The Lord is saying, I'm rolling away your reproach. You may not see wind, brothers and sisters. You may not see rain. But my God is rolling away your reproach. Don't ask how it will happen. I told you it's called the God of Jeshurun. Don't ask how it will happen. No. Don't ask how it will happen. Mary said, how shall these things be? Seeing that I know not a man. For with men it is impossible. But with God, with God, with God. When you bring God inside the equation, everything changes. Everything. Everything changes. Hallelujah. Please be seated if you can. Ah. When the waters is stirred like this, it takes an extra grace to now settle down and teach. We must learn to be sensitive. When God comes like this, it's not the display of the anointing of a man. No. No. It is the desperation of the needs of God's people rising from heaven God is a God that cares but until he finds vessels that can allow him space it will look as if he does not care help us Holy Spirit please sit down hallelujah Jesus you can find someone and sit David just strum them and play it and then um, let's see how far God will take us tonight Amen Amen Amen. Where did we stop? Let me talk about interpretation of tongues we are still on the gift of the spirit Why am I teaching the gift of the spirit? Because they are the equippings of the spirit to individuals and to the body to help us to be effective zeal is not enough in serving god we must have the empowerment and saying you are anointed is generic the anointing is like saying you have food in your house food can be anything the gifts of the spirit defines the operations of god i already told us that there are not nine gifts of the spirit the bible never records that there are nine gifts of the spirit paul gave that theological classification the whole theme of um first corinthians 12 13 14 is found in first corinthians chapter 14 verse 40 that all things be done decently and in order so paul was creating an apostolic system to coordinate the operation of the gifts so that it will edify the body and then not destroy the people but he never taught us that there were nine gifts the classification was just a theological guide to help the people the gifts of the spirit are as vast as his person there are dimensions you will see operating that you may not exactly find it in the bible there and if you do not have this understanding you can reject it in a bid to not come under the influence of a spirit of course theologically speaking we can agree that there are nine gifts as revealed from scripture but when you walk with god you will find out that there are operations there are administrations and there are diversities so paul told us that the interpretation of tongues i'll run very quickly that's where we stopped the interpretation of tongues is the ability to translate divine utterances into an earthly recognizable language for the purpose of reception and edification the ability to translate divine utterances the ability to translate divine utterances into an earthly recognizable language for the purpose of reception and edification it was paul in first corinthians chapter 13 who taught he said though i speak with tongues of men 
and tongues of angels so he lets us know that there are languages the word tongue is an ancient english word for language there are languages that are given to men Igbo, yoruba hausa you know and all of that but there are languages of angels they, they are heavenly communications that are out of the scope of the natural man and there are times that god grants people access to communicate these languages are we together that's what the bible calls the gift of diverse kinds of tongues we settled that already that the gift of diverse kinds of tongues is not the same as the gift of tongues as a prayer language no the gift of diverse kinds of tongues is prophecy in a heavenly language in an unknown language a spiritual communication that is prophetic in nature to the body god speaking to people through a vessel in a language that is not known by the communicator and this gift the interpretation of tongues must come upon the same communicator or another person to translate it into an earthly language so that the people can say amen let it come we receive we believe we receive we release our faith this has happened to many of us while we pray it's just because it sounds like your tongues for prayer so you will not know the difference but when you begin to grow to be spiritual you will get to a point where when you are praying you know that this is not your prayer language of tongues again this is an intercourse happening between you and the spirit is a language many times you will find yourself interpreting it by yourself like prophecy or you will find somebody who is not even connected to your prayer shouting your answer somewhere on the floor while you are there praying someone is rolling near a roof or a door somewhere prophesying your answer are we together kenneth e hagen walked very lavishly in all the nine gifts as we know and many times in his meeting he walked very strongly much more than any man of god i know in the gift of diverse kinds of tongues and interpretation of tongues you watch his materials and you see him many times prophesying in fact he was so meticulous in his communication there are times that he would talk and stop himself you say no this is not consistent with the spirit of god rebuke himself and start again look for another tongues the gift of interpretation of tongues it is needed there are communications let me tell you the truth there are many things god has been telling us but we do not sustain this gift that's why we do not understand the bible says he that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit saith to the churches that means the spirit is speaking but his system of communication among others is the ability to grant you access to revelations through a coded language that is heavenly we see an example of that in the days of belshazzar the bible says while they were celebrating in the temple with the vessels that they captured from the house of god all of a sudden a finger wrote on the wall mene mene tekel ufesen it was a language that was not known they used divination astrology they could not figure it out and when daniel came he looked at it and then he sustained this ability now he didn't know that this was the, the gift of the spirit did not start working in the new testament they were coordinated and theologically explained in the new testament the gift of the spirit have been as long as human vessels gave god room to manifest so daniel came and by this gift he said he looked at it and said mene mene oh king this is what god is saying whether they understood or not god will still punish the king for sure he was just informing them oh king you have been weighed in a balance and you have been found wanting this day your kingdom is taken from you that was the speakings of god but it took a man who had this understanding to communicate it the next gift quickly prophecy prophecy first corinthians chapter first corinthians let me open there so that i'll be sure that fourteen now first corinthians fourteen there's one verse okay verse three first corinthians fourteen and verse three paul still speaking he said 
but he that prophesieth speaketh on speaketh unto men to what edification and exhaustion and comfort he that prophesies he that prophesies speaks to men your prophecy should do three things number one edification building exhortation and then comfort what is prophecy the supernatural ability to reveal events informations the supernatural ability to reveal events and information prophecy is always futuristic in context except where it is a declaration of the word of god over a situation the manifestation of prophecy the character of the prophetic is such that the communications are of things that have not physically manifested yet are we together now when it is past and present that's the word of knowledge the gift of the word of knowledge oh pastor alpha this happened today this is what god is doing now that's word of knowledge this is what god is going to do tomorrow by this time tomorrow that was not word of knowledge that was prophecy are we together now now let me tell you this every prophet everybody called into the prophetic office must have this gift at work in him but not everybody manifesting the gift of prophecy is a prophet are we together here is the confusion the fact that i'm seeing things and saying things does not mean i am i can be called into the prophetic office for a long time and never see anything and never foretell yet i am a prophet an example enoch was a prophet there's not much we see about enoch's prophecy john the baptist was not just a prophet the greatest of all the prophets until christ yet he did very little of revelation there are very few times we just see him acknowledging and say behold the lamb of god who takes the sin of the world and said the one who trained me in the wilderness told me the one upon whom i see the spirit descending not much was said in terms of you know prophecy to nations like jeremiah and the rest are we together prophecy is a very powerful gift now i know that there has been an abuse of the prophetic you know like um i don't know who was sharing testimony here there are marriages that have broken because of prophets and prophecies there are individuals whose lives have been destroyed because of prophecy and all of that there are people who were doing well until a prophetic word came into their lives is that true they made them leave their wives leave their husband give away their children sell their property give their car and all kinds of things there must be a balance in the communication of the prophetic now i don't have time to now tell you the history of the prophetic in nigeria and africa specifically but i just want you to know something about prophecy everybody listen prophecy is very important for the end time now it is true that there are imbalances it is true that there is a lot of falsehood there are people who have developed such a resentment for prophecy justifiable re resentment because of the way it has been misused and has been merchandised people have extracted money from people in the name of the lord people have forced people into marriages that are not the will of god because of all kinds of hilarious visions and dreams that came from everybody match make people into doom just because of this you see that the bible tells us certain things about prophecy we must take note of number one is that we see in part and we prophesy in part this is a very big revelation the most accurate of all of us still sees in part and prophesies in part number two the word of god has given to us the bible calls it a more sure word more dependable more reliable meaning if i never have an individual speak a prophetic word over my life and i can have access to the word the word of god will carry out that prophetic ministry over my life this is very important number three this the prophetic is the office with the highest propensity of falsehood 
you hardly hear false apostles you hardly hear false evangelists you hardly hear false teachers false pastors but you hear in the bible repeated false prophets again and again and again because of the inclination with the realm of the spirit the realm of the spirit is a is a realm like the physical realm the realm of the spirit is not heaven that you are open to the realm of the spirit does not mean you are open to heaven any spirit that can access the realm of the spirit has an advantage over this realm including that of a herbalist so that someone is communicating a, a divine information that is out of the scope of the physical realm does not mean it is of god this should not create cynicism that's why every true manifestation of prophecy must be within the boundaries of the word of god are we together watch this come pastor alpha if i stand and god opens my eyes please listen or the holy spirit speaks to me or i have a vision prophetic now and i see pastor alpha having an accident are we together now or in my vision for instance i see pastor alpha beating his lovely wife now you see i have received that my renewal is what will be responsible for the way to be transferred i judge what i see and i know that it is not consistent with the character of god are we together now my understanding the word of god and understanding the nature of god will be the template i will use in interpreting that prophecy you don't expect me to look and say pastor alpha now wow, so this is how you are beating your wife no 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 automatically i know that god is revealing to me the plot of the enemy over his life so the nature of my speaking to him will be such that this is what the devil wants to do but then victory i don't have to see victory it is part of being a word addict to prophesy the victory and say i see it but this addition is consistent with the word of god if all i say is madam next week you are going to receive a beating from your husband if it does not happen i'm not a man of god you see i may have seen correctly but my lack of understanding the word of god has misinterpreted it and by so doing you have misrepresented god over this situation am i fake no am i renewed no and it's misrepresenting god every manifestation of the prophetic must be with a very thorough understanding of not just the word of god but the character of god what god can do and what god cannot do are we together now yes there are things i will see about pastor alpha i will not even need to tell him you see that my understanding of god is and my knowledge of god and the gravity of what i have seen is such that if i tell pastor alpha the nature of what i've told him will occupy his mind and put fear and so i judge what i'm about to say on the strength of certain things god has not given us the spirit of fear but of love of power and of a sound mind number two philippians 4 verse 8 says finally brethren whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are true my introducing that word has a propensity to corrupting his work with god so i will reserve that prophecy and intercede for him if in the place of intercession the holy spirit beckons on me to still reveal to him then i can come and reveal to him in such a way that i exalt the power of god above that situation interpretation interpretation is as dangerous wrong interpretation is as dangerous as error and lies listen i can be here right now are, are you are you getting blessed i can be seated here right now and all of a sudden god will open my eyes watch this i can see a jimmy in a vision and see pastor alpha's wife and then see two of them holding a child did i see correctly yes now you look at this complicated vision i i coined a vision like this for on purpose now what is this mystery i'm seeing a jimmy is married with his wife and his children now i'm seeing a jimmy standing pastor alpha's wife standing and they are holding a child let me tell you what a very foolish man of god will do you will bring that thing like that with the heat that it came with from the realm of the spirit and tell a jimmy's wife i say hey, madam just 
many things are happening that's what i what are you doing you are destroying someone's marriage it's not consistent with the will of god are we seeing now you are planting distrust between pastor alpha and his wife are we together now when you see a thing like that your first assignment is to be able to judge by the operation of the word what mean at these things it could be similarity in visions it could mean similarity in operation that there is a gift that baby being a representation of a dimension of the spirit that is being birthed that is similar to a Jimmy and the wife are you seeing that now but because you have not taken out time to judge you just say everything and destroy people's lives another example let me have a lady come my dear my come let's assume that these people are a wonderful couple husband and wife are we together they came for koinonia and now let's assume i'm a foolish man of god and i have seen this kind of thing watch this i'm not i'm not being cynical you know that i love the body of christ and all i'm just trying to give us understanding because this is a very serious thing it has destroyed people's lives now this is husband and wife do you know watch this god can open my eyes and i can look at this lady in the spirit and see how it haunts yes the nature of spiritual interpretation is such that you see the realm of the spirit you know how you watch cartoon or some of these scientific movies that's how the realm of the spirit really works i can look and see this woman with horns and just tap the husband and say oh god you mean how long did you say you have been with this woman and i just clap my hands and i say that you arrived here and this woman didn't kill you the innocent woman is standing and saying i love this man with all my heart what is this nonsense you are saying are you seeing now now the man of god truly saw a horn and he's saying i know what i saw this woman is a witch oga your whole business and your life has not been working and it is true your life has not been working but because this person does not understand the character and the operation of the kingdom his interpretation is faulty are we together now and then i now tell him mr man the best thing to do is to do what abraham did to hagar are we together now i would justify that because that story is in the bible i told you that the bible is a prophetic book you can make it preach anything you want that it is in the bible does not mean it is of god the part in the bible that resonates with god's character is the word of god are we together now so i look at this what god may be revealing to me listen is that there is a problem it is true that there may be a problem in this woman's life it could be hereditary it could be an operation of darkness that satan is trying to bring it may not even have anything to do with her directly that has an effect on his marriage but because i do not understand it i destroy this dear lady's life embarrass her in the presence of everybody a business partner let's assume she's doing poultry a business partner that wants to make order of 500 chickens will cancel that thing after that prayer why will you want a witch to to bring chickens for you so that you're, you're, you you understand that kind of thing it's not easy to be a witch let me tell you this let me tell you this listen 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 don't go and study occultism but let me be honest with you the condition to be a witch this witch that we talk about and with witchcraft and wizardry in its in its most acute form is not something a human being can just become like that the condition to be a witch is the condition to receive the mark of the beast please help the person under the anointing so this dear lady now imagine that she's your choir mistress and you are a choir member will you listen to her again when you went for the program and you saw what happened and the worst part of it is if i now touch her and she falls down ah that's it that's the final proof that this woman is a, and then the devil now starts using her face to oppress members are you seeing now just like some of you see the faces of innocent people and get up and hate them for nothing and the devil plays with your not understanding the word of god it's a rightly dividing the word
Jesus looks at Peter watch this Peter just finished confessing that he was the son of God and then Peter talks to Jesus no 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 will you go to the cross and he looks at him and says get thee behind me Satan and Peter is looking at him and Jesus understood that if he left Peter like that Peter may not have been an apostle Peter would have been depressed to death after three years of working with you you call me a devil and say no 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 Peter let me explain to you that's what every man of God should do now that you have rebuked because of your spirit intelligence must come in he said Satan desired to sift you Satan and you are two different people desire to sift you like wheat all that shout was not hatred for you I have prayed for you that your faith fail not and when thou art converted strengthen your brethren are you seeing that now that's why you can see people manifest sometimes they are manifesting receiving impartations other times they are manifesting and demons and, and all of that we thank God for that spiritual intelligence here that's why people can get up manifesting and not feel bad and not feel like the whole world is against them are we together now thank you god bless you prophecy must submit to the word of god for it to be accurate when prophecy becomes emotional when it becomes cultural when it becomes just a raw delivery of everything seen in the realm of the spirit it becomes a weapon of mass destruction the purpose of prophecy is for edification for exhaustion exhortation and for comfort prophecy does not condemn prophecy does not destroy even when God spoke to the prophets in the Old Testament he would always tell them what to do Nineveh I'm about to destroy you people and this is what will happen however they declared a fast and the mercy of God came in remember the Bible says the Lord is full of grace the Lord is gracious and compassionate right full of love I mean how did he put it now um, rich in love the Lord is merciful and compassionate he is rich in love his mercies are new every morning those of us here who are seeing visions having dreams document these things and seek guidance first especially when you are beginning to walk in the gifts of the spirit be careful don't authoritatively go and meet people they have a lot of respect for you and they will listen to everything i am careful when i speak to people because even when i joke they don't take it lightly i can be joking with somebody and say ah god bless you and the person wants to kneel down and i'm saying i'm a human being this is not anointing i'm joking just joking with you and you see the thing about the anointing is every time there is a demand whether you are joking or not that person can now fall down now embarrass me there and make it look as if you know i hardly have people to play with it's a very this this anointing sometimes is a very your life can be very very lonely someone sees you are trying to smile and the person is already believing that maybe it's, it's a word from god i am a human being jesus ate corn in the farm on sunday remember jesus was with a woman and they were talking i mean please and i think some of us is some of us men of god that make this happen you know the way we spiritualize it and make it look as if you are in the spirit every time it's a lie it's a lie it's a lie the bible say walking in the spirit yes but it's not in the character of you can't smile you can't do anything you feel bad if if i am angry and i slap david dam's head I should just say sorry i shouldn't make it look as if it's the holy spirit that made me do it no this is i'm a human being i was carried away i got emotional and touched his head i'm a human being jesus was angry did he say it was the holy spirit who made him angry no prophecy but we need it now the last thing i'll say about prophecy before we move on is the fact that you must never resent it the resentment we have for prophecy we have mixed the baby and the bad water and thrown it away 
there are two dimensions of prophecy there is the revelatory dimension of prophecy there is the creative dimension of prophecy the revelatory dimension has to do with insight and information about people situations nations like jeremiah the creative dimension of prophecy is when you have the word of god alongside the grace for performance when the prophet said by this time tomorrow he was not revealing he was creating are we together now we must desire it the church that rejects the prophetic is going to be in trouble prophecy is very important a man's life can change overnight because of prophecy we have there are many of us if only we embrace the ministry of prophecy we would have left this realm left the current dimensions that we are, we are in but we've been grounded because of a cynicism the moment you see someone saying the lord is ah please all you this stupid especially if he's a young man that's why they see everybody they mix join all of us together and just throw all of us and make it look as if we're all demons no no hallelujah nothing happens in the earth realm until prophecy announces it nothing happens in the earth realm until prophecy announces it nothing happens in the earth realm until prophecy announces it prophecy is not just a revelation it's an authorization for spiritual things to find expression all through scripture you see angels bringing messages and heralding them before those occurrences begin to happen let's go to the next gift faith there is the law of faith an operation of faith there is the spirit of faith there is the gift of faith what is the gift of faith an unusual ability to believe god an unusual ability to believe god that is higher and greater than your current world level higher and greater than your level of spiritual exposure there are times because you see generally speaking your faith level is proportionate to the level of the word of god that is in you your level of understanding of scripture and the ways of god is commensurate to your faith there are certain challenging situations in your life in leadership there are times that you need to bring certain realities from the realm of the spirit that is higher and bigger than your personal work with god at that point you don't just need the law of faith you need the gift of faith the gift of faith is always short-lived because under that influence of the gift of faith anything uttered will come to pass it is the reason why god does not leave people to work with it for a long time because our own renewedness will destroy people's lives the gift of faith is the operation of the faith of God, not faith in God. The very faith of God working in a human vessel. The faith that created the heavens and the earth, not the word of God. The very faith of God, an impartation of that faith to help you command realities that otherwise will not come. That's why the gift of faith works peri with the working of miracles there are certain situations that are challenging higher than you do not even understand the dynamics of that result as it is but the gift of faith comes upon you the character of the gift of faith is unusual courage and audacity unusual courage it has happened to many of us in the place of prayer fear takes you to the place of prayer and you are praying and prophesying praying and all of a sudden an ability comes upon you and you begin to speak and say audacious things not even caring who is listening later when you hear what you say even you you are embarrassed by it it's a sign that you are not the one who said it i decree and declare in the name of jesus christ tomorrow by nine o'clock a helper is appearing and your neighbor is watching you say hey, hey i just gave this guy one spaghetti and this that's not you because I, let me tell you how you know that's not you by 12 30 you will sit down and say hey, why did i now embarrass myself you call it an embarrassment because 
your your original faith level has returned now and you are seeing that that faith level cannot accommodate that level of miracle but god had to move through you and truly you will see that a miracle will happen that's why you give him glory when it happens when they say man of god you quickly turn and say god is you one of the hallmark of the apostolic ministry is the gift of faith the gift of faith daring things by the gift that's why those who are called in the apostolic ministry if they don't allow the holy spirit work on them usually they are very very arrogant very outspoken sometimes very sarcastic it's a side effect that comes with the office your intimacy with the holy spirit is a secret to correcting it so that i work in an apostolic office and i am arrogant and sarcastic and outspoken and some of these wrong things i may say it is how it is no your work with the holy spirit was designed to correct it it's like you are cooking in the kitchen the moment you put i i don't i don't have any business with the kitchen but i'm just saying what i remember i know that when you put palm oil in a hot pot what happens there's a side effect the whole kitchen and maybe the neighboring environment it can be choking does that mean you should stop the cooking people are hungry they are waiting for the meal but then you have to create a way of managing it so most times before women will start they will do it outside or they will open the window in advance that's how you work you must create a system with god to cover for the side effect that that operation comes you don't choke people and say you are you are boiling palm oil no if i keep insulting pastor alpha stupid you are crazy you are you are you are, you are a stupid person and then i say it is the anointing no it is not the anointing it is the effect of the anointing um yes but then the unrenewed part of me mixing with the anointing is what produces that outcome it can be corrected hallelujah that's why when paul finished giving us an exegesis of all the gifts of the spirit he said i show you a more excellent way a more excellent way of administering the gifts that if they do not work by love you are not operating the more excellent way are we together every one of us here will require this gift if you must get results in your life a day will come when your faith level cannot take the kind of miracles you need the urgency around it will require the gift of faith there are times you see during the miracle service i'm just walking and looking at people and i know that ah this situation is very challenging sometimes the people are waiting for me to come please help that person under the anointing and then the person can just whisper sorry sir i have hiv and this hiv self is not just me me my wife and my child you don't have to tell everybody now you are standing there or someone is saying he has tuberculosis and he's coughing in in your coughing before your face and you are inhaling the thing if this thing is not working in you you do this for five years the probability of catching tuberculosis is 100 percent 100 percent that's why we tell people to walk with god before they begin to move in certain levels of ministry it's not pride you will if i've been faking this thing by now you will see it it would destroy you one day because you are laying hands on people it's not this laying on of hands is not something you do just because you are anointed that's why sometimes you see me pray for these people before we allow them to go it's not it's not some man of god thing you are contending spirits you can carry problems you have no business carrying leave someone land upon your life you finish that service you go back have you not seen people who minister to the sick and what was on them the person went back to sleep um, one leg did not he didn't he could not lift one leg again that boomerang effect i believe in the gift of faith let me submit to you that where god has brought us by his grace in this ministry is an operation of the gift of faith there was a year let me tell you a little story there was a year when early that year before koinonia will start god gave an instruction that we should carry every one naira in this ministry 
and sow it as a seed one week to koinonia resuming i can't remember which of the years was that everything i said god everything now let me tell you, you better make sure that that gift is working in your life because that's suicidal not that you should carry a sizable seed and go and give empty everything close everything and i did it foolishly and stupidly i submit to you in less than seven days more than 10 times that amount return it's faith you need it some of us right now you wrote your exams humanly speaking you are not going to graduate one you wrote nonsense two you didn't finish you need the gift of faith you need the gift of faith are we together yes there are wicked supervisors ready to make sure they frustrate you how about getting a job you keep carrying your certificate to everybody say sorry we don't need what you studied and at a point you feel bad and say is it my fault that i studied this one day while you are praying the gift of faith comes on you and you make declarations by the spirit all of a sudden someone calls you you need it it is given to help believers our families many of us our families are in a mess we need the operation of this gift to correct things you see that lady that testified that was what was working in her the dear lady that said she went home gather your relatives what if it doesn't work do you know what it, you can be stupid by yourself but to gather relatives who are not born again and then it doesn't work Abba. the gift of faith when you have plan b it is your faith when there is no plan b it is the gift of if i perish that's what was on esther when she was on her way going to meet ahasuerus the destiny of the nation of israel was at stake and she entered if i perish ask her to say it after that time she won't be able to say it again hallelujah that was the grace that was at work in moses when moses went before god he said why are you crying to me moses said what is all this two million people are shouting these guys are going to kill me you don't know how hard how how hard hardened and hearted they are and god says go and and part the rivers theologically historically speaking um historians tell us that it's not like the river parted and they told people now walk do you know the miracles that happened there even if the river parted there's going to be space on the ground are you going to jump down won't you die so the ground had to lift and come up to where they were for them to be able to walk through it and moses took his rod stood before two point something million people and said people the egyptians you see today that's the spirit of faith I speak to someone or oh, the Egyptians you see today in the name of Jesus Christ after this meeting you will see them no more forever I say it again the Egyptians you see today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ whose faith is at work here you will see them no more after today please sit down the gift of faith a man of God true story many of you will know him pastor Korede Komaya um, I think it was Bishop Aremu's wife Bishop Aremu's wife she, she you know they have twins and she was sitting with the man's wife and then looked at him and said ah you said how many children do you have and she I think she had just maybe one or two then and she looked at her and carried her uh what is the, this thing ladies tie their head tie and threw it on her and said take twins job that was it the woman got pregnant twins gave birth that's not guess that's not guess when you see it happen sometimes i see it happen i'm surprised somebody can come and while he's talking and giving every long explanation apostle this is happening it's like prophecy i don't even know when it comes out of my mouth i just say it is done and you see the person living disappointed you didn't even wait for me to finish i struggled i joined the line i humbled myself what is all this let me express and then the person goes back and things change the gift of faith is powerful are we blessed the gift of healing jesus i wish i had time to dwell on this maybe we'll take another series next year what is 
notice that the bible does not say the gift of healing it said the gifts g-i-f-t-s the gifts of healing what is it the ability to bring physical and emotional healing to people the ability to supernaturally bring physical and emotional healing you know years ago i really used to laugh at white people when i see all of them every little thing they cry every little thing they cry how did you get here and she's trying to explain just that there was a delay with taxi and then she starts crying they give her a hunger they say, what sort of human beings are this i mean just anything makes them cry men women but as i grew in leadership i found out that emotional brokenness is worse than physical sickness the bible says a broken spirit dryed the bones there is a way a man can be emotionally devastated and die not by any physical sickness are we together emotional wounds are created because of words and circumstances they are more hurtful if i slap you and the sign of my hand is on your face it won't reach two days that thing will disappear correct but if i speak something negative about your life you can hold that word for 10 years and it will not leave you is that true the same thing how many of you have seen people with diabetes and you see an injury that will not heal it looks like it will not and that's exactly what happens to the spirits of people hence the ministry of people like joyce mayer and all of this you can look at them and feel ah no falling down no shouting i tell you the truth they are doing a major healing ministry 95 percent of africans before age 15 have been raped by wicked words from the ones who called you stupid to the one who called you idiot to your teacher who said you will have a big head you are dull to the mistakes you made to the fact that you were the oldest person in your class baba class four you don't know those things were affecting you a broken spirit you get to school and everybody's harassing you people look at you and say i hope you know you're a very ugly lady i'm sorry i have to just tell you my mind and the person thinks he's being bold those that accumulation demon spirits find a safe haven in that mindset and it destroys you and you find out anything god tells you you just look at him and say god use somebody those kinds of words are reflections of emotions that have been broken that's why worship like this creates that kind of healing you can raise a song and while everybody is laughing only one person is crying that person is getting healed at the end of it is like you know how you bath someone just feels light feels i have been healed from this i have counseled people and i am amazed at the things people go through and yet they still smile and walk there are people if they give you half of the emotional load on their head it will kill you instantly yet they are carrying it and saying hallelujah praise the lord ah the bible says rejoice not over me my enemies there are many of our parents when they lost their last job they never got another one again do you know why because the way they disgraced them and drove them out of that company it was so embarrassing and they said i can't i can't do this to myself again sir but you're a phd holder no i rather remain poor after 10 years how about those who but please don't feel bad those who marriage did not work for have you seen people like that and after 20 years you tell them it's okay now i think you can get back i know okay maybe your wife died or something happened and they tell you look the memory is still as fresh as yesterday have you seen people say i will never forgive you till jesus comes that's what emotional devastation can do there are people here as i'm talking god is healing you from this because let me tell you it's a luggage oh i was raped when i was two years I was raped when I was five years. The house boy that worked for us raped me. Some of us were raped by our own parents, sadly. Are we together? And you grow and those things are still in your mind. I can never make it. You wrote Y.A. 10 times. Jam 11 times. There is no understanding of favor. 
so every time we say god is favoring people you don't look and say is it me you are talking to healing if you are not healed and god ever gives you an opportunity to be a leader you will judge everything from the template of your emotional wounds if someone laughs at you you say why are you laughing at me because you remember that that's how they laughed at you to mock you the person was laughing rejoicing with you but your cynicism you see that your wife just looks and says, ah my husband my husband and say please i don't like disrespect I say, ah, my husband i have told you this is how my mother did this is uh, must everybody know i'm the last one it's not about that situation there is something that has created a wound in you are we together there are some of you they use all kinds of words you had nicknames ugly nicknames and cliches some of you used to urinate in secondary school or primary school although you were it was a situation that required prayer and the adults there did not have spiritual intelligence to help and this i remember that time they would gather the person who is easy himself and sing songs and dance dance around dance and the person who the person who stand like this with your bed sheet that you who urinated what a way of destroying people don't ever do that to anybody how about brothers that blast ladies you are not fine you are not this and they say i i i, I gave it to her well, how about the ladies that blast a guy she blasted him in 99 till now he has not approached any lady every time he wants to go that wound god is bringing deliverance in the name of jesus christ but there is a physical healing there is the physical healing the healing ministry is needed more than ever before i was listening to benny him not too long before i came and you know i hear him read these healing scriptures and i am touched we need to bring the healing power of god back to the church i tell you this there's too much there is very little of genuine healing not everybody is in a wheelchair but let me tell you there are people who need physical healing physical healing how god acts chapter 10 and verse 38 how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power and the bible says he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed healing oppressed healing oppressed every sickness is an oppression from headache to your hair falling to all of this i remember i think it was in mina or so when i saw a very touching miracle a gentleman that has never smelled anything in his life doesn't know how you put perfume he just looks at you you know what a bad way to live what of those who don't hear well what of those who don't see well all kinds of sicknesses the first time i would pray for a lady years ago and the lady told me she had no womb i don't mean something was wrong no womb anybody that doesn't believe in miracles don't argue with the person the day the doctor cannot help you i promise you you must believe i believe in the healing power of jesus or a robot who said this every day of his life i am called to bring the healing power of jesus to the nations he believed it are we together there are people here seated looking at me who have all kinds of things incurable diseases every time a medical predicament defies drugs and medical attention then there is a spirit behind it are we together now yes and let me say something about the gift of healing most people have been indoctrinated in the church to hate doctors and hate medicine i will never teach that you will never hear me teach that i believe in divine health i believe in all of this but day and night we're taking people to the hospital to take care of them we have lots of doctors here a few of them will be doctors by next week or week after next and all of that we we have a lot of our doctors yes 
you, you actually can clap i mean it's not all of them smiling already they will come and dance before god here to the shame of the devil so please don't get into this resentment i can't take drugs you are about dying just panadol will solve that problem now of course there are times that you stretch your faith if you stretch it and it doesn't seem to work take the panadol cure yourself and keep studying the word there is a realm of divine health i believe that are we together but we must never stigmatize people so you see people secretly buying drugs they buy malaria drugs they run and take injection for five days and come and hold the mic and say in the last 10 years i've not even taken paracetamol let's 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 be honest let's fear god jesus is called the great physician 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 say is there no balm in gilead praise god i believe in medicine and when you pray for people especially over a sensitive case don't stop them from taking their normal medication when they become healed medicine will confirm it are we together now especially for maybe hiv patients or people with some terminal diseases there are many pastors who have killed innocent people they prayed for the hiv patient for instance and said do you believe yes stop taking your antiretroviral dogs and the person was very fine but now after four or five months you find out that the person started emaciating and the person died when you pray for someone and it does not work please take the person to the hospital if you yourself are sick and you've prayed and prayed and nothing works you can still be declaring the word of god medicine is still a miracle you don't talk to the drug you swallow it the drug finds where your problem is the whole pharmacology behind that drug is a miracle so don't don't act as if you didn't tell the drug come to my ears you just swallowed it it's a miracle by god's grace we will never discourage people we have a first aid box as a ministry if someone collapses now under the anointing and all of that there is if he needs medical attention there are doctors here who will attend to him let's be responsible these are the things that try to make those who walk in power look like fools because we we keep killing people every day destroying people and not stopping you know stopping people from medical attention i don't do that Tonight, I believe that God is going to bring his healing power again to someone. I believe in the ministry of healing. I have been a victim of sickness, so I know the relevance of healing. I've shared with you my testimony. When I had a fungal infection that ate my head, pastor, completely ate everything here. You won't see one, and it was just wounds everywhere. I know the rejection that sickness brings. I buy puff puff for people they won't collect it because my hand touched it even if I washed it in their presence can stigmatize you how about the woman with the issue of blood there are people living examples like that I remember praying for a lady who would bleed non-stop for sometimes like three or four months this lady can stand and be dizzy and just collapse like pass out We need to bring the healing power of God to people. We need to let them see the power of God in their lives. The devil is afflicting people with all kinds of sicknesses. And tonight in the name of Jesus is someone's night. The last gift of the spirit and then we will pray. The walking of miracles. What is the walking of miracles? The ability to bring about supernatural results supernatural occurrences that are above the laws of nature the ability to produce supernatural results above and beyond the laws of nature the working of miracle defies process there is no process with the working of miracles now life is a process but the working of miracles what happened in samaria was a walking of miracles by this time tomorrow the economy of a nation will completely changed there are many of us who need miracles a healing is a miracle when it is instant 
when a healing is instant it's called a healing miracle miracles are not just limited to human bodies finances jesus performed that operation he said go and catch a fish open the mouth pick money out that's the working of miracles are we together now yes i believe in the working of miracles i've seen it happen in my life i've seen it happen in the ministry the multiplication of five loaf and two fish that was not just divine supply that was the working of miracles what of the the fish that they caught master we have toiled all night nevertheless at thy word and then he said cast your net to the right side and they caught so much fish they had to beckon on their partners what of ezekiel 37 restoration is a miracle bones that have gone and then the bible says something that always intrigues me when i read it it says bone was joined to its bone meaning no bone made a mistake every bone located the right one miracles someone is here and is in need of a miracle you are not sick in your body but there is a situation in your life that needs the intervention of god's hand if you go through the normal course of the law of process you may never be able to catch up restoration is one of those aspects in a man's life that requires the gift of the working of miracles and i will restore to you the years can years be restored i thought it's just material things that can be restored but god says no not with me when i can walk a miracle the bible talks about zion giving birth in one day that have you ever heard this he said as soon as zion travails she shall put forth her son let me tell you i want you to get ready for strange occurrences in your life things that will happen you will know that this is only god they will say but i know it took 10 years to build the house and he said my brother i was sitting down like this and a key came to me miracles the bible never said mary was pregnant for nine months no sir the angel never told mary according to the time of life it was never said that pregnancy was nine months miracles the nation of israel 430 years captivity in one night he said they chased them they didn't even allow their bread to rise they said please get out of this place are we together the lord has declared that this is a year of triumph let me tell you this i truly believe in restoration and i believe in speed pastor femi come pastor alpha come let me show you something very quickly and then we'll pray please stand here gentlemen just stand close to me watch this if pastor femi and pastor alpha are making progress in life this is them walking is that true and then something keeps pastor alpha down are you seeing pastor femi is moving forward now now pastor alpha start walking slowly this is progress not restoration restoration means he must be here because this was his original place now let me tell you what this miracle does it picks you and puts you so that if they check your life they cannot see where the delay was so when god says i will restore he didn't say i will release the force so that you make progress no sir there are many of us at your age there are things that should have happened what you need is not progress you need restoration restoration this gift of the spirit is a strange operation of the spirit where people's lives can change overnight overnight god can give speed oh god can bring his word to pass in people's lives he said rejoice not over me my enemies oh the fact that i lost my job and you are seeing me and my wife we are just moving around and i'm not eating anything you are laughing but the day this god arises in 24 hours 24 hours i've seen god do things in my life that has brought tears tears in my eyes i said god so this is what you can do some of you have never been surprised by god there is a way God will do something. Your first cry 
it's not the miracle it's how it happened god i've always heard that you can move like this but this one that you have done it to me no lord i fear you he said he does these things that men will fear him when he does it he signs his signature on your life i am god jabez was a man who was born in sorrow the mother cursed him because of the pain he caused her and jabez said oh that thou wouldest enlarge me god even if you release me to start moving forward now when will i make it let me tell you we need speed in nigeria everything is against a young man's establishment everything if you are a ministry you need this gift in your life otherwise you will be in trouble nobody will give you chair nobody will give you canopy nobody will give you money if you don't know how to command miracles please help that person under the anointing there by the power of God. there are situations tonight that need to hear the word of the lord god is a miracle walker God is a glorious God is God is I know you as a miracle in my life Lord God is a glorious just sing it one more time to build faith in your heart my God is Here's a miracle walker, miracle walker. God is your glorious God. One more time, say God is. He's a miracle, a miracle walker. God is a glorious God. There is hope for a tree even if it be cut there is hope there is hope apostle at my age i've not even gotten admission my brother there is hope this god in god's economy one plus one is not two oh one plus one is any answer he gives any answer one plus one can be a car what is the relationship between alphabets and car the word of god one plus one can be breakthrough god can carry a man's lifetime achievement and give him one month listen this is not some get rich quick things i don't encourage people to be irresponsible but i'll be a stupid person to tell you i don't believe god can change people's lives overnight look at this ministry look at my life whoever told you god cannot arise for people listen if you don't believe what i'm teaching you you will struggle in your life as if god is not the part of scripture you believe is the part that works for you are we together listen if you are married and three years you've not had a child or four years you have not had a child if you have one child that's a testimony but that's not yet your portion if you have twins you have covered ground that's restoration i hear what i'm saying if you graduated 2000 and let's say six and by 2015 you cannot even rent a house if they give you a job with hundred thousand that's not yet your portion ah that's not your portion come on now how can that be your portion when somebody gets up and say i'm going abroad my house my car and the payment of the school fees i've left the lord say i should give you that's your portion now god is called the god of portions i know this about him righteousness and justice 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 she came to him and said avenge me my enemies the man neither feared god nor men but because she impersonated him listen let me tell you when i begin to pray and make demands over things in my life i don't spare i say god i'm not where i should be oh i'm not where i should be no i'm moving forward thank you but you said i will restore you didn't say i will make progress are we together 
yes that's how to pray lord as a lady i plan marrying 22 and 32 i can't just marry and continue you are going to find a way of carrying me Shabakatos lekota sabriata katoshiata hallelujah lord i would have gotten a job in 2010 the man said i should sleep with him and get the job but because of you i refuse now it's 2017 i'm seven years my payroll is seven years where is the window of heaven i place that demand and brothers and sisters you will see god do things that they will think you held a charm the god that we serve the working of miracles god is truly a miracle worker i've seen him change people's lives i've seen him step into families this year god has done things in my life that brought tears in my eyes i said god what is this can you allow god use your life to reveal his name the names of god are a revelation of his possibilities there are names you are just calling but you have never really seen it listen early this year i taught on the gifts of men that thing was not a message it's a it's a fearful dimension of god that god brought me into where men stand up to solve your problems as if you charm them there is a grace that makes that happen you will never listen there are some miracles that if they have not happened in your life you will never have time to serve god let's tell ourselves the truth some of you have served god 10 years you are still begging for bread allow god to step in and do something for you you don't need you what you need is more than a job you need god to sign his name in your life how much is a job how much is hundred thousand you now have five children be honest will hundred thousand bless them when one child's monthly school fees is more than a hundred thousand you need the gift of the walking of miracles the wine finished in a feast the gift of miracles is a cure for embarrassment cure for embarrassment the wine finished and they went to him he said fill six pots alas master it was borrowed he needed the gift of miracles every time your life is in a point of embarrassment that's the gift you need that's the gift you need that's the gift you need i don't know how to make you believe this thing we are going to pray brothers and sisters before i begin to minister to us please i beg you listen listen i want you to be angry at your current level and say lord this is not what i agreed me and you this in the secret place i am not ungrateful but this is not our agreement by our agreement the level of grace i should be working in now your gift this is not the agreement lift your voice and pray bring forth your strong reasons the gifts of the spirit are the platforms to experience his possibilities
Hallelujah. I have to stop here so that we can pray. I'm supposed to teach you how to receive the gift, but just leave it. We'll take it another time. We have to pray. This thing I've said, I'm angry in my spirit. We have to pray. There, there are doors that we must force to open now. There are doors that we must force to open. Let me tell you, listen, listen. If you keep following your life casually, you will never get some breakthroughs. He said, right from the days of John the Baptist and until now, the kingdom of God suffered violence and the violence will take it by force. Lift your voice and open your mouth. Announce things that must happen this night. Lord, you gave gifts to men. Your majesty, your majesty, your majesty, your majesty, your majesty, walk in your days that if you were told you will not believe it i will walk a walk there is something i want to do in your life there is something i want to do in your life in your family i'd like you to pray one minute lord i believe you all i believe you i believe you don't let the devil tell you you're wasting your time blessed is she that believes Blessed is she that believes. Visit my finances, O God of heaven. Visit my family.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. I want us to pray. No matter what has left your life, call it back. Call it back. Lift your voice and pray. Whether it's money that left your life, call it back. Joy, call it back. Even God who quickened the dead and call it those things. Call it those things. Call it those things. Call it back. Sakata parato shekete. Those outside, make sure you are praying. Those following online, pray. Call it back. By the spirit of faith. By the gift of faith. We call back opportunities. We call back graces. We call back mantles. We call back dimensions. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to pray just before I pray for us. I'm releasing my faith with you. I don't know what God told you should have happened and you have not seen it. I'd like you to insist now and say, God, I've not forgotten. I bring you to remembrance. Early this year, you told me, Lord, you told me I will be laughing by October. I'm not yet laughing. I place a demand. I put pressure on your integrity. Lift your voice, lift your voice. Place a demand. You said it. You can do it. You said it. You will make it happen. It is within your power. Shabakata praskalabato sebregeregelebo. Hallelujah. 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 Listen. Listen. My Bible says, withhold not good. To him that it is due when it is within your power to give the bible said it don't withhold good he said do not say unto him come today come tomorrow where you can do it now say lord now faith now faith i place a demand why wait tomorrow when it can happen now it is within your power it is within your power change my life now i place a demand Cry out for your finances. Cry out for your life. Abarato soto kabaradash lekata kata kata brasa na bala na bala na bush. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus.
I want you to believe God is giving people things as I'm talking listen you won't cry forever there is a God that is alive I want you to believe this I'm saying it you won't cry forever I come with an anointing in this place I come with the anointing that follows this office you won't cry forever there is a God that is alive 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 hallelujah the Lord is showing me a family before the end of August four people getting a job the end of October four one two three four I'm declaring it I'm declaring it it will happen to a family four people within two weeks a supernatural door that embargo of witchcraft is broken now that embargo of witchcraft is broken now I release the grace that makes this happen in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah so when a man cries unto God Lord have mercy on me thou son of David Jesus saw him right at the border of Jericho he saw that man seated there only God knows how long he had been there but it was costly for Jesus to assume the man needed help and so he kept passing and the man shouted the more thou son of David have mercy on me the woman with the issue of blood when she came the Bible says she said to herself if I may but touch the hem of his garment the centurion left his house and came where Jesus was pleading for him to do a miracle so every time you need God's attention you attract it by hunger desire and a desperate repeated communication of that you don't just sit down and wish and say God knows my heart no God needs an expression those who really keep growing in the spirit are those who have made it a culture to never be satisfied with where they are to never be satisfied with what they've seen i've experienced the anointing but lord i know there can be more i've experienced prosperity but i know there can be more i've experienced wisdom i've had encounters i've had visions i've had the, the operation of the prophetic the miraculous but i know that there is always more in god so never put a full stop to your work with god don't even allow the current results in your life because of how frequent the results are they can build a fortification around your life that stops you reduces your impetus to pursue god and seek him more hallelujah you know the the greatest limitation to progressive success is the last one you've had failure does not make people backslide failure spurs people to do more but when you start having results chances are that on the strength of obvious results that you're having there might not be any desire to seek him again after all I, I may not be in a very high level of the healing anointing but at least there is something here and there there are miracles after all I may not have very deep access to revelation but at least I have a few things to share that attitude in the Bible is called complacency complacency when you build inertia to your pursuit so that it now impedes your desire to move forward the, your passion must be fresh it must be consistent and you, you, you should never tone down your desire for God hallelujah so this is very important what I'll be sharing with us tonight um, I have come to a realization that any responsible man of God any responsible ministry any responsible structure any responsible leadership among other things must develop an attitude to respond to the needs of the people 
Are we together? When you build people, if God brings us together in a ministry like this, our growth must be intentional, our growth must be specific, and then our growth must be, it must be consistent. And it is the assignment of every pastor, every man of God, every spiritual leader to stay with God and not just stay with God alone, to sit through the agency of the spirit of wisdom and design a system of teaching people such that their growth becomes holistic. Are we together? Please, if God is calling you into ministry here or you are a pastor, you must understand that you cannot guess the way to build people. There is a system of growth. The same way a student goes to school and um, the, 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 the faculty or the department designs a system. We call it a program. That program is supposed to make the student come out with a certain understanding the program is intentional now here and there you could alter the programs with a few things or upgrade and add a few things but there is a structure you build people not through guesswork you build people through structure you see this that we are doing now we are not doing anything new necessarily there is a spiritual system that has been created that makes people powerful that makes people rise to a point of kingdom influence so what we are doing is we are aligning to and with the ways of God to guide and help every one of us to rise. Say amen. So every pastor must have a system. If God has declared that this for instance is our year of multiplied grace and influence then it should speak in the kind of messages that are communicated because people rise up by revelation. Are we together? So you must be able to communicate the truths that build people along the line of prophecy and then you must communicate the truths it is up to the man of God to stay with the Holy Spirit and monitor the spiritual growth of a people and bring relevant teachings that number one are life applicable no matter how deep your teachings are if they do not translate to life applicable principles that people can use to produce results in their lives every day then you are wasting their time are we together if the truths that you learn here cannot be used in your business cannot be used in your workplace cannot be used in school cannot be used in your place of influence wherever your sphere of influence and cannot be used in your own personal work with god the moment there is please someone respond to that baby can we have someone please hallelujah praise the lord the moment there is a system or there is no system to communicate knowledge to you in such a way and a manner that your growth becomes holistic you know one of the saddest things and and, and i say this with a very heavy heart with um many churches and many ministries in nigeria is that the men of god do not build the people intentionally to prevail they don't build them intentionally to be agents of transformation they do not build them to be men of power so we have people of prayer who cannot do well we have people of prosperity who are bankrupt spiritually so every man of god must bring teachings that are not only life applicable but must make sure that the teachings are actually building people I personally believe that I will never be part of a church or a ministry where I sit under that anointing, that man of God, that influence for a, 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 an appreciable period of time and I cannot trace exactly the things that are happening in my life. I think it's an utter waste of time. Praise the Lord. So I want you to respect and value the teachings that come here. By the grace of God, we are not just spiritual people, we are intelligent people. We have stayed by the spirit of God to, to find out the systems of the kingdom and the things that make things work. And some of the things that I share with you are principles that I live by. Not principles I practice. Principles I live by. 
and there are principles that have been responsible for undeniable results in the lives of people organizations territories and so on and so forth so these ideas are not a guesswork they are not they are not cunningly devised fables as the apostle will say they are tailor-made to build you it's up to you to submit yourself to those teachings and practice them appropriately and then you will see your life rise may your life rise in jesus name may your life rise in jesus name may you be so powerful that as a person you are equivalent to a nation in the name of jesus christ so i have a few things that i want to share with us tonight that in my opinion are the keys that can help any man survive the storms and the vicissitudes that these seasons have brought upon us there are principles that when we learn we will be able to regardless of the storms um, we will ride above it and thereby demonstrating the fact that the kingdom of God is a more superior kingdom to any democracy to any kind of system we are demonstrators of the reality the Bible says that we have been called to show forth to show forth right is the Greek word is 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 the is, a, is the word doxazo not just is an a manifestation of the glory a showing forth like like um someone will bring people and show the products a display so when men say there is a casting down and you sustain the keys to say there is a lifting up you will compel men and they will want to come and find out what principles do you use there is no one on earth who wants to remain with an understanding that is not producing results. Even if do, they do not know that they need change. Everybody wants change. That's why we go to Habalist. That's why we change soap. We change houses. We change institutions. Nobody wants to camp around anything that does not produce. And let me tell you something. The options that are in the world now have reduced the patience of people so the moment there is no result people don't give you a second chance they move immediately if you have a product for instance generally speaking and someone patronizes you and your product cannot deliver to expectation that's all it will take a long time before they return to you are we together so it is with ministry so it is with a lot of spiritual things i i can literally sense the frustration in the hearts of many pastors many members they are asking questions that for many people no one is asking is answering will we continue like this if there is a god in heaven why are we this way spiritually financially and otherwise hallelujah matthew 13 verse 11 popular scripture let's start from there tonight jesus was teaching and then he said he made a very interesting statement Matthew 13 verse 11 it's projected please let's read together one to read now let me just let me just guide us a little to understand really what the kingdom of heaven is when the bible talks of the kingdom most times you find out especially in the new testament that there is an interplay of um, the phrase or the clause the kingdom of god and the kingdom of heaven the kingdom of god and the kingdom of heaven they are not the same they are not the same the kingdom of god represents any sphere any territory where the sovereign power and the sovereign control of God can find expression. Take note of my choice of words. Any sphere, any atmosphere where the sovereignty of God can find expression is called the kingdom of God. So the lake of fire is part of the kingdom of God because he designed it, he created it, he still has control over it. The heaven of heavens belongs to the Lord. The earth is his footstool and every other place the psalmist said where can i hide from your presence so everywhere the influence of god can be extended to everything that was created by him constitutes his kingdom 
Are we together? So when you are talking of the kingdom of God, you are referring to every sphere of influence. Practically speaking, everywhere is the kingdom of God. Everywhere. But when you talk of the kingdom of heaven, now listen, when Jesus was teaching, right, in what we call the Beatitudes, um, when he got to Matthew 5, 6, he began to teach them and he says, thy kingdom come. Then he says, thy will be done in earth as it is in the heavens. Are we together? So the kingdom of heaven represents any sphere and any territory where the sovereign control of God has been permitted to find expression. Now, not a sphere where God's sovereignty can find expression. A sphere where the sovereignty can or has experientially been allowed to find expression. And that happens when his will is being done. Are we together? So the whole earth belongs to God, but there are still witchcraft covens. Are we together? There are still lives. Everybody was created by God, but not everybody belongs to him. Are we together? So the influence of the kingdom of God is everywhere, with every witch, with every wizard. But only those who belong to him, they have come into the experience of the kingdom of heaven. They have allowed their lives to be an expression of the will of God. The kingdom of heaven only finds expression in any territory and any life where the will of God experientially is being done. Are we clear about that now? So that we do not just confuse the words. I just felt like putting them in so that we can have it in perspective. The kingdom of God, his sovereign sphere, he fills all things and in all. The kingdom of heaven, every territory, every space where he has been allowed to find expression. A very clear example of this is the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Right? You can call it the Kingdom of Nigeria everywhere. But not every part of the Kingdom of Nigeria is directly, as we know experientially, under the control of the federal government. Is that true? We have a forest like Sambisa that is being contended with. There are certain people within that territory who are refusing the sovereignty of the nation. We have other aspects here and there. We have um, several pockets of places who have refused to subscribe to the laws of the land. Now, those areas, those territories are rebel territories. And the assignment of the government is to insist through the agency of the military until every territory within that sphere comes under the reign and the rule of the federal government. That is the true concept of sovereignty. Are we together? So God's desire is not just for the kingdom of God to be known and understood, but that the kingdom of heaven, what we call heaven, right, will find expression in every life and across every territory. When that happens, there will be no more poverty. When that happens, there will be no more oppression. When that happens, there will be no more death. When that happens, there will be no more sickness. When that happens, there will be no more hostility, hatred, and all of these things. And then heaven, the heaven of heavens, as revealed from scripture, is a prototype of that possibility. So we see heaven as the end of what earth should be like. Are we together? It has already happened in heaven. So there's no point asking, can it happen? A sample of it is already in existence now. A sphere where there is absolute love, absolute joy, no lack, abundance, peace, and so on and so forth. So our assignment is through the ministry of the Holy Spirit to keep bringing pieces and portions and dimensions of that reality to our lives and our environment. And the more they successfully arrive here, everything about our lives begin to be a reflection of that reality there. The dimension we choose to embrace is the dimension we will see. Are we together? 
So when the Bible says all things are possible, he speaks from the perspective of the heavens. It is up to the saints here on the earth to find out the keys that can make those all things possible. But simply because of our passion and our rate of search is so slow, our lifetime becomes too short for us to reveal all the possibilities. So we die only experiencing some. But God's desire is not for us to experience some. His desire is for the fullness, the fullness of all that heaven is, is to find expression. To a point that God will have to help us by himself and take the old earth and the whole heaven away and bring in another one. Are we together? But as many as received him, even to them that believed on his name, he gave them power to become. Power to become. Power to become. Become what? The experience. Not just the sons of God. I told you that the word son of God is not just one begotten by a man. The word son of God is an office in heaven. It didn't start with the New Testament. Son of God is an office in heaven. That's why women can also be called sons of God. Ladies can also be called sons of God. Old people can also be called sons of God. It's not about gender. It's not the way we perceive sonship like, you know, you give birth to something. Because we were not, Jesus Christ was begotten, but we were adopted, right? By the spirit of adoption. So let's look at a few things a few keys that will help us I have been intrigued I still am by the fact that life can be absolutely predictable to those who have the keys and have an understanding of the ways of God I will keep drumming this until it enters our spirit and becomes our template in life that when you allow your life to chance listen please when you allow your life to guesswork, when you allow your life to emotional suggestions, you're going to live a life of failure. You will be a victim of too many situations and circumstances. And there are so many people who are victims of, they try anything. Whenever they have challenges or as they live their lives, they guess per day. What do I do today? What do I think is the smartest decision to make? And most of the informations that guide our decisions are wrong. Are wrong. They were fabricated by people who do not know God or people who do not understand and honor his ways. So most of the decisions we make in our lives are primarily wrong because most of our decisions are inherited. Transferred from father to mother, transferred from one intelligent man to another, or transferred from one confused but arrogant person or system to the other. There are few people who have come to a point of humility to truly understand and acknowledge that we do not know so much. It is my... I, I pray every time and I tell God, bring me to a point in my life where I never get too confident of myself. A point where I know that if the Holy Spirit and his word does not guide me, I don't trust my decisions. Hallelujah. You want a life of transgenerational relevance? You desire a life that transcends the limitations that come with society. A life that is recession proof. A life that is above the vicissitudes of life. A life that is above frustration. A life that is above regrets. A life that is above pain. A life of meaning and a life of relevance. Do the following. Number one. Whoever desires such a life, any church that desires such an experience, any organization that desires such a reality, the first requirement is that you must have a genuine encounter with Jesus. Don't trivialize what I'm saying. Write it and please listen. A genuine encounter with Jesus. Not just an encounter with the Holy Spirit. A genuine encounter with Jesus. 
I have come to discover that there are many people in church, there are many professing Christians who have not had a genuine encounter with Jesus. You can know all the church words, you can know all the, the cliches, the Christian talk, you can be an elder in church, you can be a pastor, but the question is have you had a genuine encounter with Jesus? An encounter with Jesus is not just coming out for an altar call. You can act drama. People act drama where they get born again and go back and genuinely they are sinners. People act drama as pastors who lead people. They even pray in tongues in the drama but they are not born again. An encounter with Jesus. That's why the salvation of many people looks like it's fake because it's not born from a genuine encounter. Let me show you a scripture. Um, Luke 24 please media help us Luke 24 we we'll look at verse 28 down to 34 I may not read every part of it but let's see how far God will help us thank you Luke 24 this was the experience of Jesus with the two men um, on their way to a city called Emmaus the Bible says and they drew nigh unto the village whither they went and he made as though he would have gone further let's read on but they constrained him saying abide with us for it is toward evening and the day is fast spent and he went to tarry with them this is Jesus now and it came to pass as he sat at meat with them listen it says he took bread and blessed it and break it and gave them 31 and their eyes were open and they what until your eyes is open you cannot know him listen stop there please it says and their eyes were open and they knew him that's not that they recognized him alone they had an encounter with him and they testified they said something 32 let's read on please and they said to one another read on did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us by the way and while he opened us up to the scripture an encounter with Jesus that something will burn upon your spirit as the word of God is coming something burns upon your heart I'm telling you many believers do not have this experience at all at all That's, that shows in how much we respect him that shows in how much we value spiritual things. We sit down under different kinds of men of God. We sit down under different kinds of anointings. Different kinds of teachings. But we do not desire genuine encounters. Did not our hearts burn conviction? Did not our hearts burn conviction? 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 When Peter spoke, right? Uh, the encounter of Pentecost the Bible says they, are, they were pricked to the heart that's why you can have people sit down in church like this and a man of God is preaching others are crying and you see them look and immediately after the message they get up with their conscience seared the Bible says with hot iron no conviction no willingness for transformation Many people do not have an encounter with Jesus. Many people do not have an encounter with Jesus. Don't just desire to recite salvation prayer. Desire a genuine encounter that will show. Let me tell you, it is impossible to have an encounter with Jesus and remain the same. No. It has nothing to do with whether your faith is working or not. It must work, I guarantee you. When Jesus met the woman at the Samaritan woman remember the story the Samaritan woman at the well this was a woman who had been married to over six men you know five men and the sixth person she was with was not even her husband terrible situation and Jesus by the well he began to engage her in a conversation at the end of it you know what the Bible says a solid encounter she left in other words her encounter with Jesus made what she was doing before his arrival trivial let me tell you one of the indices of an encounter is a re-evaluation re of your life if your priorities do not change you've not met Jesus 
no way you can't tell me your value system your way of life your desire your passion your aspiration before and after you met him is still the same no sir when you meet jesus you will shift for sure are we together many people's lives do not change no conviction their, their, their priorities are not altered at all you were an unserious person before you met God now that you claim you meet him you are still unserious unserious with the things of God unserious with the house of God no you've not had an encounter uh, you know why I'm telling us this if people deceive you you can grow past their deception but when you deceive yourself it is true deception you're my treasure my priority who can compare to you for great is the measure of your royalty oh morning star you truly are everything everything Lord you are everything to me everything everything Lord you are everything to me sing one more time says for the night cometh where no man can walk again in fact the bible says it this way it says the zeal of the lord there is such a thing called the zeal of the lord do you have it in your life you don't have to be a pastor you don't have to be a pastor's wife it has nothing to do with ministry the zeal of the lord everybody say the zeal of the lord you must pray that the zeal of the lord will eat you up like a cancer where everything that has to do with God, everything that has to do with the house of God, you give it utmost seriousness. Hallelujah. There are people who are not serious at all about the things of God. When they say pray, others are praying. You see them stand and they are just watching. They don't care. Have you been filled with the Holy Spirit? One day, I've been thinking about it. Oh, the prayer department is organizing a meeting for that. Um, I, I, I'm busy. Less is fair over every spiritual thing. You've not read your Bible for one month. It doesn't matter. God will help me. 
You see, let me tell you something. It's, it's called the spirit of complacency. It's a dangerous state to be in. Whether or not you are a believer, you've got to be passionate about something in your life. Terrorists are passionate about something. Are we together? Unbelievers are zealous and passionate about something. The zeal of the Lord must consume you, brothers and sisters. This lukewarm, careless, if it happens, that's all right. If it doesn't happen, that's all right. That kind of lifestyle will never make you someone who will be relevant transgenerationally. Many of our parents were like that. Part commitment to a harbor list. Part commitment to a church. Part commitment to education. Part commitment to mentorship. Part commitment to financial intelligence. Part of everything. They never stood out in anything. Do you know it's better for you to be passionately in error? At least you have standards. It, it honestly is better if I see somebody and you are a chronic sinner, you are a chronic drunkard, it's faster for you to be born again. That's why God chose Saul. When he saw Saul and saw his zeal, if he was determined to make sure someone died, nothing would change him, not even the rain. He will get up and do it. It's called zeal. Question. All of us here and those following me online, I don't care whether you think you are born again or not. Do you have zeal for God? Don't say yes. Your life should show it. Do you have zeal for the things of God? If no, when will you have it? The day you die? The day the devil finishes with you? The day you lose the job? The day you cannot lift one hand again? The day you wrongly mentor a generation? The day life whips you and you no longer have options? They that seek him early, find him. There is a time. There is a time to seek God. Let me tell you, you don't seek God anytime you want. There is a time you seek God. Say, Lord, give me zeal for you. Say it, Lord, give me zeal for you. Not zeal for preaching. Uh -uh. Not zeal for ministry. Not zeal for programs. Zeal for God. I can look at your life and know the extent of your zeal for God. I look at the books in your life and I know your zeal for God. I see your commitment in the house of God and I know your zeal for God. I see your passion to see others saved and I know your zeal for God. Now that's a big one because many believers, the concept of soul winning has dried in our lives completely. Read your Bible. Everybody who encountered God by themselves, they were too grateful to keep quiet. The madman in Gadara, the moment he had that encounter, the Bible says he ran to the Decapolis, 10 cities, and brought people to Jesus. The Samaritan woman, she left her water there and ran to the city. Come see a man who has told me everything about my life and the bible says when the men met jesus they say we believe now not because you brought us we have seen for ourselves saul of tarsus when he encountered jesus christ in life and in death i want to ask you a very serious question and god is asking you this question whose life today has been changed because of your being born again. It's an index to measure your zeal. Can you turn and say somebody's life, Elijah, come, come. Elijah has come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. This guy was a drunkard, but hallelujah, he's changed today because of my life. I was an instrument. My zeal for God was so powerful that he was able to give up everything. Let me tell you, when you are around people and they don't see a need to exalt God more than what they are currently doing, your light is not shining. That someone talks with you and goes back home, he can't read again. He can't eat again. 
you, you, it's like an infection the person sits down he will try to pretend as if what you said didn't enter him but you've transferred something and in the night he's rolling from left to right of the bed and he gets up and kneels down and says Lord please I can't, I can't fight this war forever you see when when bringing many people to the saving knowledge of Jesus and seeing their life transformed is not your passion you will never carry the anointing if you like fast for 100 days is the Lord speaking to us tonight I'm speaking to every one of you if Jesus Christ appears right now in Koinonia and says everybody walk through this crowd and hold the hands of someone whose life has been changed because of your existence how many of us will have someone in our hand many of us will walk everywhere and the person will say no 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 I was changed you saw me in my situation and you left me it was someone else that came to change me I was your neighbor for three years you saw me and you left me by the mercy of God someone else God used someone else I want you in your mind hold the hands of someone whose life is a testament of your zeal for God and then you will see why many people's prayers are not answered you will see why many people's passion for anointing and power and crowd are we together whose life who God filled with the Holy Spirit because you are passionate about God who stopped smoking and drinking because you came to know the Lord whose life whose confused destiny was brought back in order because of your zeal please hear me if you are here and you are not doing anything for the kingdom I want you to know that God is not happy with you don't allow anybody to deceive you and say you are alright you are not alright there is a serious problem you may not be going to hell but there is no zeal in your heart those whose impact will be transgenerational are those who God is more than church to them God is more than koinonia to them God is more than ministry there are many pastors who don't have zeal for God they are only preaching because they were transferred to that branch and I'm, I mean on Sunday you must preach on Friday you must speak you must come for koinonia you must speak to people there is a routine that you organize 21 days fasting so you are part of it you are in the worship team and you must do the rehearsals if you don't come what do you tell your head of department so I am there are we together you are a worker in the house of God just because they know you I'm holding the camera just because I have to do it no let me tell you zeal creates passion in you that you even have to pray and say ah let them not say I'm overdoing this passion you are in the worship team every time you are going for rehearsal there is joy in your heart you are not dragging yourself and saying today again. No. Your zeal has died. Sins. Don't let my love grow cold. I'm crying out. Light the fire again. I need your discipline. I'm crying out. Light the fire again. Don't let my love grow cold I'm crying out light the fire again I need your discipline I'm crying out light the fire again you were so zealous they used to call you pastor now they call you bros do you know why something happened your, your backsliding left you and it became so obvious that the people now felt they are even insulting you calling you there was a name they called you which was a testament of your zeal now everything they are doing you are doing too so they don't see the difference again so they can as well just call you bros when they wanted to gossip and you entered not because you were judging anybody there was, your passion for God was so contagious but now as soon as they are saying once you enter they say sit down thank God this guy has completed the equation he will bring another side of the story look let me tell you something eh? if you want to be serious with God 
just set your face like a flint and go for it if you want to play games with God then at least be bad and go to hell let it be that you were not serious and you went to hell but that you are one leg in one leg out acting as though you love God acting as though you are not serious there are many ladies who are not serious with God many sisters are not serious with God they are serious with marriage they are serious with relationship huh? they are serious with beauty nothing is wrong with all those things but God there are many parents in fact parents own I say it with, with due respect many of our parents are not serious with God especially the fathers the mothers are serious with God pain has brought them to God but many fathers are dead spiritually and the family is suffering because of their lack of zeal you pray they get up and say keep quiet why are you disturbing us I have headache please whereas that's the solution to the headache they stop you are we together ah. how many parents encourage young people who are serious with God stop all this your gym gym thing we started before you were born but then they have another younger brother who jumps the fence and they say talk God is helping us at least he's going to school you see you see our rating you see our rating zeal for God how many homes as a home are passionate about God how many families have contributed to the advancement of the kingdom when was the last time many families came together to pray I, I know when the last time was when there was trouble severe trouble that could threaten the father then we would do fire brigade disturbances and when there is peace we announce everybody should go devotionals morning devotion in many families have died completely completely everybody now does his own you get up if you're a Pentecostal you go outside you go and shout near the fence if you are if you are you are you are an orthodox or whatever you are you just open whatever book you read and sleep while you are reading it and mock yourself no zeal are we together we do everything we want to do with our time and our life then the balance of it is what we give God say God you better be grateful I'm giving you this I mean I'm, I'm getting busier by the day anything that will take God's place in my life I don't care whether it is fame whether it is money may it not just come to may, may it be far from me in the name of Jesus Christ I want you to check your life because you see love hear me love is like energy it can never be created nor destroyed if I used to love you and I no longer love you I transferred it somewhere for sure if I used to love you and I no longer love you I transferred it somewhere I used to love him now I don't love him that space cannot be empty so the question is what occupied it I will lay down my idols and thrones I have made and all that has taken my heart Lord I will bow Lord, I will bow to you to no other God but you Listen, I'm speaking specifically right now by the Spirit to those who were serious with God before. If nobody has told you it's a problem, backsliding is a very bad thing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's a terrible thing to at one time in your life be serious. Where did you leave the prayers? The nights when you called upon His name. Where did you keep the fasting? Who preached you into thinking it was not important? what relationship make God look no, like nonsense in your life who asked you out and asked God out of your life what job came into your life and removed everything God out of your life take what I'm saying seriously 
Where did you keep the visions you used to see? You solve the problems in people's lives because of how serious and fiery your spirit was. But right now, everything passes and there is no eye to see again. And you keep moving around. There are many pastors who need to go back for a retreat. They are still standing, moving around as usual. But we know the wine has finished. There's nothing there again. The zeal of the Lord. To the point that many of us are even ashamed now. Huh? You are ashamed now. The only place you are confident about God is koinonia. How after that you are ashamed because God has looked like nonsense to you. Anti-technology, anti-civilization, anti-socialization. That's your understanding of who God is. Did our hearts not burn within us as he opened the scripture? Hallelujah. Many fathers have left God sins. Sins. Looking for money. Left God sins. Do you know the number of Christians that patronize herbalists? You think if the herbalists were not patronized, they wouldn't go and look for something else? They are in business alive and strong. Patronized by Christians. Look, let me tell you. You know what I'm saying is not a lie. You know what I'm saying is not a lie. Look, we must get back to that place where God is all and in all. Where God is not just the most important thing. There are four keys I'm giving you tonight. This is just number one. But I must burn it in. There are backsliders that need to run to God. It's not an insult. It's not an insult. Don't allow people keep telling you you are okay. You know when you are not okay. You know when you are not okay. Everything is going haywire in your life. It's a message. It's a message. Don't wait till you are destroyed. Your joy has left you. Your peace has left you. Impact has left you. Passion has left you. The gifts have dried from your life. How can you say nothing is wrong? How can you fool yourself into thinking nothing is wrong? Let me take an altar call. I'm going to take an altar call. Two fiery altar calls. One, you need Jesus. I'm not giving you any long story. You've heard everything I've said. You desperately need Jesus. Two, you need genuine restoration. You're saying, please don't pretend it. And, and I'm, I, I don't mean that you just need to step up. You were one serious with God for whatever reason. Sincerely, you know between you and God, you need a personal revival to come back. Please, I will count one to five. Nobody is closing their eyes. Wherever you are, inside or outside. I want you to stand up and come to the front right now. One, run like there's fire on the mountain. I need revival. I can't tell a lie. Lord, something is wrong with my life. I will lay down my idols. Those of you who are sitting, be praying. Don't be watching who is coming. It's none of your business. Some of you sitting are supposed to be outside. So don't sit down watching who is coming and who is not coming. I'm coming back to the heart of worship when it's all about you. Please pray all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it when it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. Sing it with me. It's all about you. It's all about you, Lord. It's all about you, Jesus. Yeah. It's all about you. All about you. It's all about you. All about you. It's all about you, Jesus. 
all about you. All about you. All about you. All about you. All of you who are out, I like you to cry. Renew my passion, oh God. I don't know where it went to, but it must return this night. Renew my passion. Renew my fire. Lord, you are more precious than silver. Lord, you are more costly than gold. Lord, you are more beautiful than time. There is nothing I desire compared to you. She na 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 mo so na 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 de. She na mo so na na de na na. More precious than silver. Lord, you are more costly than gold. Lord, you are more beautiful than diamond. There's nothing I desire compared to you. There is nothing. I desire compassion. Lord, there is nothing I desire. There is no one I desire. There is no one I desire. There is no one I desire. Make sure you are praying. There is no place I desire. There is no place I desire. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life. Breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life. Breathe on me. Lord, I look to you for life. Affect my life. Please pray in one minute, all of you in front. Lord, affect my life. Change me. Take away that heart of stone. Replace it with a heart of flesh. Lord, let me stop playing games with you. I mean business. I want to live a life of impact. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. Here is my life. I want to live. I want to live. Serving my fellow man. Doing the will of God. Here is my life. Here is my life. Here is my life. Here is my life. I bring it back to the altar. Take it, oh God. Here is my life. I bring my life. 
Here is my life. Here is my life. Here is my time. Here is my time. I give you my time. Hallelujah. All of you who are out, I want to pray for you. You have my life. You have my life. You have my life. Hey. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. All of you who are standing outside here whether you are giving your heart to Jesus for the first time or you are de rededicating your life I'd like you to say it passionately as though you are talking to a real person standing close to you say Lord Jesus restore my zeal restore my fire restore my passion I declare this night Take your place. Take your place in my life. I mean business with you. From today, everything that has taken your place in my life, regardless of what it is, I pray that you rise above it. My heart belongs to you my mind belongs to you my body belongs to you take it use it for your glory from today every lifestyle every association that does not please you I part ways with them forever in the name of Jesus. I honor you for this decision. God bless you. Please rise up and go back to your seat very quickly. Celebrate them and thank the Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the Lord God Almighty reigns. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy. Holy. Are you Lord God Almighty? continue of God is strong here please sit down sit down sit down let's continue so that's the first key to a life of transgenerational relevance to a life that will make God vow to defend you a life of passion a life of zeal a life that has truly met God number two the second key you need to rise above the tides and the vicissitudes of life 
is mental transformation. The second key you need, the power of a renewed mind. Someone is under the anointing, you can just carry them to the back. Paradigm shifts, change of mindsets, ideologies altered, shifted for good. There is so much that God wants to do in and through our lives. But our paradigms, listen to me please. Our mindsets, our ideologies limit him again and again. Most believers are taught as powerful as this altar call was. It is not all there is to your salvation. There are different dimensions and facets of our salvation. And the consummation of your salvation is the renewal of your mind. First Peter chapter 1 verse 9, please. If we can have it in the amplified version, please hurry up. First Peter chapter 1 verse 9. Shabakato Sapratakata. First Peter chapter 1. Sikraske Mambrosketa Rato Shela Pariata. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel And run some captivities I am Can you help us, media? Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel And run some captivities I am I'd like us to read it together. It's projected. One to read. Aha. Uh -huh. You receive the result, the outcome, the consummation of your faith, the salvation of your souls. It says, receiving the end of your faith, King James says, even the salvation of your soul. The salvation of your soul is the renewal of your mind. When your mind has experientially been brought under the lordship of both the person and the philosophies of Jesus. Is the culmination of your salvation at that point you experientially begin to walk in the benefits and the blessings of salvation because the bible tells us that salvation is a well there are wells not just a well it said for with joy shall you draw out of the wells the wells the wells divine health a life of impact a life of prosperity all in that word soteria it's an unencompassing word it's not just translation from darkness to light the experience of the fullness of the life of God in all its dimensions and the Bible says for that to happen the consummation of it is the salvation of your soul the renewal of your mind paradigms I, I was teaching, I think it was yesterday in the school of ministry, and I was teaching students, and I taught them that we are programmed in two ways. The first programming is called genetic programming. Genetic programming comes from father to son, in sin did my mother bear me, and so on and so forth. So we, we receive traits spiritually by inheritance, but the second and more dangerous of the programming is environment. It's called environmental programming. Say environmental programming. We grew up in different regions of the world, different regions of Nigeria, under different kinds of parenting, under different kinds of exposure, with different kinds of experiences. Are we together? And so our concepts, our perspectives, our ideologies about God ideologies about marriage ideologies about education ideologies about greatness ideologies about a good life ideologies about you name it diverse ideologies influenced by our environment culture our levels of exposure our failures of the past have all environmentally programmed us now, when you come to God, watch this. When you, got, when you got born again, 
your mind did not change all of a sudden are we together there needs to be a system of progressive transformation which is dependent on the allowance that you give the Holy Spirit through the word it's not by force you can choose to stop and say Lord I peg myself at this level thank you for all you've done for me but I cannot continue with you you are not going to hell but you sure will not do much for the kingdom and the quality of your life will be greatly affected are we together there are two dimensions to our work with God there is an encounter with his presence and his person that's the first dimension to our work with God an encounter with his presence and his person the fruit of that dimension is um, conformity to the image of the Christ so when you have an encounter with the person of Christ you have an encounter with the presence of Christ you are conformed to the image of Christ and you rise in character the fruit of the spirit is at work in you your character becomes Christ like that's the benefit of an encounter with the person but an encounter with the person Christ will not automatically change your destiny and the quality of your life you must encounter the principles of Christ you must encounter the mysteries of the kingdom you must encounter the ideologies and the philosophies of Christ it's not enough to have an encounter with the person Christ you must encounter his ideologies his philosophies his thinking his paradigm you must be willing to exalt the word of God above culture above your ideologies above your experience at that point the principles of the kingdom you have now embraced and are practicing will begin to bring new results in your life everybody say new results yeah you are not going to get a new result as far as the quality of your life is concerned with an old ideology the bible puts it beautifully it says no man puts new wine correct in an old wine skin no you cannot put new wine in an old wine skin new wine must be put in a new wine skin so your own assignment is to present a new wine skin and God's assignment is to pour the new wine let me tell you how God makes the old wine obsolete he pours small new wine in the old wine because the Bible says when new wine is poured in an old wine skin it will tear it so God introduces something new to your old mindset and it rattles your philosophy making your beliefs obsolete and you want something new and that's where true transformation begins say change my mind oh God say change my mindset I don't want to begin to tell you how limited our lives can be when we do not sustain a paradigm that is consistent with the word of God and by word of God I mean God's ways of doing things the principles of the kingdom not just scriptures your mindset must come in perfect alignment to God's idea I'll give you an instance as bad and sad as the economy is and I sympathized, you know, um, I was sympathetic to it. We are responsible people. So we don't ignore uh, the reality of what is happening in our society. How be it? In God's system, there is a provision. Say there is a provision. There is a provision for a possibility to experience abundance, even in the midst of famine. Now, it's up to you to work with the mindset that has been proposed as far as school economic theories government policies are concerned or you can switch and choose to adopt the ideology of the kingdom and then you will see the results divine health there is no such thing as divine health in the physical world divine health is only in Christ there is no such thing as that you are expected to be sick once and again all the time every time without exception are we together now, when you begin to adopt the mind of Christ, you now find out that there is a possibility in Christ and there is a provision where a man can rise and that your body can be immune to communicable diseases and all kinds of things that destroy people. A possibility based on another ideology. Where you are today is a reflection of how much space you have given God in your mind. I've taught us here again and I'll repeat it that mindsets are doorways 
mindsets are not like doorways they are literally doorways they authorize the entrance of demon spirits to your life and they authorize the entrance of the holy spirit to your life the devil can have limited or almost no access to you if your mindset does not allow him even witchcraft curses and all of these things that have plagued the lives of men these causes have gotten unlimited access through certain mental constructions like fear, the planting of fear, bad ideas that ignites the law of expectation. Are we together? The greater part of deliverance is not casting out the devil that is responsible for that operation. The greater part of, of deliverance is the transformation of your mindset. So your mindset changes so that it does not authorize that operation to find expression again. Because when a spirit leaves, the Bible says it will still come back and check. It still calls that place my house. Are we together? The transformation of our minds. In Psalm 78 verse 41, popular scripture here, the Bible says they limited the Holy One. They limited the Holy One. It was the encounter of those in the nation of, uh, of the, um, the Israelites. Their sojourn out of Egypt. Right? And the psalmist by the Spirit was given a few details there. And he said they limited the Holy One. They limited the Holy One. Psalm 78 verse 41. They limited the Holy One right they said can god make a wilderness how many times have we limited god with our mindsets and our understandings proverbs 23 verse 7 proverbs chapter 23 verse 7 he leads me and guides me to the city of papa he leads me and guides me to my place of destiny he leads me and guides me to the city of above he leads me and guides me to my place of destiny please sit down i'm sorry i didn't know you were still standing let's read the a part just the a part one to read for as he thinketh in his heart so this is scripture the word heart in many translations is interchanged heart mind for as he thinketh in his heart it did say so he will be so he already is as he thinketh in his heart your reality a messless expression of your ideology listen let me tell you an uncomfortable truth the quality of your life right now in all its ramifications with no exception the quality of your life and my life right now is a messless reflection of our ideologies what we have been able to understand and what we have been able to authorize this is an uncomfortable truth it will take a lot of meekness to admit this what we have been able to understand and what we have been able to authorize meaning if we can understand more and we can authorize more of the possibilities of God to find expression we will rise from where we are to another dimension and another quality of life say amen koinonia is where it is right now because of the limitation of our mindset are we together where God has brought us now by grace is dependent on our mindset and our understanding and where we need to rise to we have not risen there already because something about our paradigm is limiting us it could be a paradigm in leadership it could be a paradigm in in organization it could be a paradigm in the anointing it could be an understanding there is something as a person and as a ministry we have not yet gotten to that holds the key to our next dimension if we do not get it we remain here forever if we get it then we rise right Paul the apostle said I went up by revelation you don't go up by desire I went up by revelation what have you seen what do you know what has changed about your perspective that has improved the quality of your life there are many 
well-meaning but nonsense ideologies we carry around. One of the ideologies is the concept of the sovereign will of God. We just believe that everything that happens in our life is the sovereign will of God. How can I lie, Sharia? A very stupid mindset that has been responsible for the pain of many people. So we sit down and we are irresponsible as far as our participation in the outcome of the events of our lives are. And we justify ourselves and say, God planned it, that's why I'm poor. God planned it, that's why I'm not happy. No, sir. The will of God is very clear in his word. I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Jeremiah 29, 11, saith the Lord. They are thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end. God can take advantage of a situation and turn it for good for we know that all things although not created that way but they can work together for good. It's a system in God's mercy that makes everything to eventually work for good. But that doesn't mean it cost it. Are we together? The simple paradigm this change of mindset that my success and your success does not entirely rest on God and not entirely on me that there is a partnership can I use you again please there is a partnership between God and Joshua Selman for the outcome of his life if koinonia must rise it's not just God alone it's not just Joshua Selman alone there must be a partnership there is a role that is exclusive to the office of God I cannot do it but there is a part God will not do for me if you must succeed in your life in your marriage there is a role as a sister a husband will not just come because God said male and female he created them you have a role to play in being virtuous you have a role to play in being prepared submissive with a meek and a quiet spirit are we together and then God has a role to play in convicting the brother and bringing him into your life you want to become an exceptional CEO you want to become a very great person you have a role to play to have a teachable heart and the humility to be mentored and to be shown the pathway that leads to a great life God's own is to back up and reward your humility with the required information and access to the right people every outcome in your life including the prayer of salvation as free as it looks you have to participate this is a revelation many people in the body do not know so they leave everything to God father I have five children you gave them to me I, I release them back to you if you don't pay their school fees that's your business now that looks spiritual I lift it up there is a book in a library how to come out of financial struggles you look at it and pass and go to a restaurant that's the answer to your prayer you ignore it there is free to air where a man of God like Samadhemi is preaching from his years of labor and telling you there is a reason why your life is where it is you just laugh and say all these men you change the channel you have demonstrated your unwillingness to experience that dimension of God are we together there is always a part I have to play even in the arrival of the anointing in my life if the anointing just arrived anyhow everybody will have it the anointing does not just land like a plane anywhere planes don't land anywhere they have designated places well prepared intentionally for their landing if a plane lands in a forest what do you call it plane crash you don't call it plane landing plane crash because it landed in a not designated place let me tell you the anointing of the spirit is holy and precious it will not just land on any head like that that head must be prepared for the anointing to come a body has thou prepared not a body did you make available you prepared it Esther prepared herself to meet the king the bible says that Dothan uh, um, um, prospered because he prepared his way before the Lord are you preparing your way to be successful or are you hoping that you will be successful please sit down there are many of our loved ones who are not preparing for anything yet they believe in their hearts that they will be successful 
ask them what they are doing ask many pastors what are you doing for an extraordinary ministry and they tell you I'm waiting on God wonderful you finish the fast what did God tell you to do there is always something to do to get a desired outcome there is always something to do to get a desired outcome God will always commit a responsibility to you Deuteronomy 28 verse 1 it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I commanded this day right that you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you it will not happen by default hear me brothers and sisters there is the labor dimension of faith there is the labor dimension of faith there is a labor dimension of faith it's not free it's not a gift so lazy people have no place in the realms of greatness completely there is no provision for that say a renewed mind the question I want to ask you very quickly this night is what are you doing to renew your mind what show me the spiritual investments show me the intellectual investments you are making now that you have acknowledged that something about your paradigm is responsible for the quality of your life even if you don't have any money in your hand show me what you are doing I don't mean what business show me the materials you are accessing let me see the voices that you are submitting to for mentorship and 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 transformation you know in nigeria everybody is a guy of himself are we together everybody is the boss of himself regardless of how ignorant we are we claim we are the gods of ourselves we know everything we live in a world all by ourselves that's the recipe for failure as bad as this economy is there are people this is about the best year for them so far without exaggeration in every white this is the year their wives gave birth this is the year they became millionaires this is the the year god shamed their enemies i mean they've had the they, it's been a bed of roses from january till now to a point that they're even afraid to testify it because people would think they're lying yet for others this is worst year they can't wait for December in Egypt there was utter darkness children were dying in Goshen there was life there was light there was rejoicing it's up to you to turn your life to Egypt or Goshen you turn it by light a paradigm shift the Bible says ask for the ancient part don't guess ask for it it's been found already there are keys that are responsible for abundance the key is not business there are keys responsible for their abundance there are keys responsible for joy joy there are keys that can take you out of inferiority complex there are keys that can help you rise above failure there are keys that can motivate you through times of pain there are paradigms there are understandings please hear me hear me in the name of jesus christ invest in changing your mind don't invest in dumping informations in your mind make sure the informations are worth um committing yourself to the light you have must be bright enough to turn your night to morning it's not enough to have light is it bright enough stars shine in the night but you still call it night but when the sun comes night turns to day the light you have is it bright enough to make your night become morning because for as long as it is night weeping endures are we together i am obsessed with knowing where i am missing it in life my heart is passionate i pursue wisdom I pursue wisdom like a jewel that is missing. There is no price that is too much to pursue uncommon mentorship, to pursue wisdom. I listen to people. I listen to ministers whose lives have produced the results that I desire with all humility. That's why I respect the Bible. I don't just read it. I don't just believe it. I truly respect it because this is a compendium of God's wisdom. 
any man who walks with the light that is written here will change his life this is what changed my life so far how could I ignore it I don't read it to get a message I don't read it to cry so that I can speak well they are life to those who find them and health to their flesh please pay attention on developing your mind Jordan bookstore is here Jordan is here seated buy the truth and sell it not look for the areas in your life where the devil is singing choruses and marching unhindered and find relevant materials by the grace of God we have taught different messages across different places if the economy is whipping you financial dominion part one to four the wealthy place right activating seasons of greatness activating breakthrough the ministry of destiny help us extraordinary accomplishment the cost sit down with these teachings and listen to them and stand up with both the knowledge and the impartation and change your life it says they that sat in darkness have seen a great light it was a lamentation in Nephtha and Zebulun. It said, they that sat in darkness have seen a great light. You don't rise because of desire until your light comes. You will never rise. Say amen. The Bible tells us to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. To be transformed by the renewing of our minds. I'd like you to pray very quickly in one minute and say father every mindset that has limited my life whether it came from culture whether it came from my upbringing every mindset reveal it to me and I'm willing to drop it go ahead and pray in one minute very quickly every mindset that is keeping me poor no matter what I do money doesn't come to me every mindset that keeps me limited it looks like I'm a failure in everything. In relationships, I'm a failure. Every mindset that makes good things leave me. Please change my mindset. It may not be my fault. I inherited it. It's what my father taught me. It's what my mother taught me. It's what my culture taught me. People in my family and my lineage, that's what they believe. But Lord, I submit to you. Lift me beyond culture. You raise me up so I can stand on mountains. You raise me up to walk on stormy sea. I am strong when I am on your shoulder. You raise me up. I went up by revelation listen sit down please your mindset must change years ago the Lord spoke to me and told me that I was hosting mindsets that came sincerely but were responsible for the limitation in my life and because you see let me tell you something by God's grace and by the privilege of God's mercies I've always been a very intelligent person all through my life it's been like that God's grace on my life and intelligent people are arrogant people it's very difficult for them to admit there is something more that they do not know are we together and so when God brought me to a point I had to break my pride and say look young man you grew up in a family under a father and a mother under a culture under a government under a system and your life is inevitably a reflection of their highest level of mental transformation and so their limitation has now become your limitation the heights they got to is where you are now and if you don't know more you will remain there forever you want to rise higher it's not just my duty alone you must get new information and I started sitting down under the mentorship of great men like Bishop David Oyedeko, great men like Dr. Miles Munro, Dr. Mike Mudok. I wanted to change my mind. I was humble and I was intentional about it. The things I read stung my ego. Some of their teachings directly insulted me. But I had to humble myself and say, look, I needed this. 
I wanted the anointing of the spirit in my life. I met a lot of people who were not anointed and they told me what they felt was the formula. I tried it, it didn't work and I knew that that was why they were not anointed. So I started looking for those who were truly anointed like Benny Hinn and I found the secret. Love everybody but don't follow everybody. Please be very unapologetic about not following people who do not have results. It doesn't mean you castigate people doesn't mean you criticize people I have no loyalty for anybody who doesn't have results you can teach me how to live well a social life how to be a kind person but when it comes to the areas I want results I find people who have exceptional results that are a bar and a standard that's why I love Jesus his life inspires me when I read about Jesus I'm amazed at how invincible he was who you are following who you have allowed access to your mind is shaping the results of your life. And that's why every pastor must know that every member that sits down under your anointing and under your grace is a trust from God. They bring their minds and they bring their experiences in submission two hours, three hours every week for the rest of their lives. You better don't give them trash. You've got to give them something that will grant them access to rise. That's why every man of God must not only be anointed, you must be vast. Go for information and bring time-tested principles that can help the people of God. They will thank you, they will market you, they will bless God and they will pray for you. But you teach men junk that destroys their life, they will hate you, they will curse you and they will make sure they participate in the downfall of your life and your ministry. Number three, time is gone. The third key you need to rise above the vicissitudes of life. The third key you need to live a life of transgenerational relevance and impact. The third key is the discovery and the development of yourself and your abilities. Oh, I could spend the whole night teaching on this. The discovery, write it down. It's not as simple as you think it is. The discovery and the development of yourself first your intrinsic value not just what you offer yourself the discovery and the development of yourself and your abilities in one word value everybody say value those who are enjoying right now regardless of the economic recession those who are enjoying right now regardless of government policies are those who have proven themselves to be men and women of value men and women of value value is a description of the solutions you possess that can change the life of a person and a territory value is a description of the abilities you have that can prefer pragmatic practical solution to the problems of mankind I was teaching we're on a series the last series in the school of ministry and his finance and I was teaching the school of ministry and I was challenging them yesterday and telling them that the reason why many people are poor is not because of witches and wizards they are poor because they do not have any value in exchange for the rewards they desire they want rewards without value are we together someone can look at this ministry and see how God has helped us financially and with the level he has helped us and think how can young people be this blessed it's not about being young it's about being valuable are we together when a woman who has been barren for 10 years comes and in two months she takes her child that's result say result shout it again that's exactly what you need to prosper results not stories creation is not waiting for the explanation of the sons of God they are waiting for the manifestation that your life becomes an unending stream of results for people if Christianity didn't have results you would not be part of it I guarantee you salvation is a result Jesus said it he did it we are witnesses and participants so we worship him are we together anybody who cannot produce results in our economy today is the person who will beg forever all kinds of results a pastor who does not stay with God to have dramatic supernatural results I don't mean falling down and rising up 
results of salvation results of changed lives results of the supernatural at work in the lives of people no results no value no reward it's as simple as that the discovery and the development of your giftings of your ability is the key to your exit from a life of mediocrity listen to my message activating seasons of greatness i teach there that the secret of greatness is favor but that favor does not happen on its own favor is dependent on many factors the gift of a man proverbs 18 16 the gift of a man and i always add the gift that is developed and deployed not discovered crude oil that is discovered does not bring money when it is refined then it can bring you resources there are many of us who are sitting on gold mines and yet languishing in poverty and pain there are families with potentials to rise above certain realms of mediocrity spiritually and otherwise but the inability to discover and develop our giftings this is a gift it has earned people money Don Muen has blessed the world with it he's also eating with it this thing I'm doing proffering supernatural solutions has brought wealth to people and has blessed others in ways that are beyond imagination listen you must make up your mind that you are going to be a man or a woman of extreme value extreme value make sure you don't just write value extreme value intellectually spiritually extreme value you must be a master at something that is in demand and people will veto your background they will veto your limitations and they will bless you and call it a privilege value are you valuable tell me what about your life will make me desire you tell me what about your life will make me pay you and not feel the pain I told you the true measure of your value is when no amount given to you for your value becomes too much when people can give you 10 million and still call it a privilege you are extremely valuable no man is indispensable but there are people who are very difficult to replace may you be such a person in the name of Jesus I made up my mind that I will be extremely valuable as a man of God extremely valuable as a leader and the key is not to make noise the key is not to snap pictures and go on Facebook snap near Lamborghini the key is not to go around and, and carry all kinds of shirts huh? Angela Galasso and wear Tom Ford and so these are designers I'm wearing it that's not the key to be valuable the key to be valuable is to sit down invest in yourself sharpen your gifts as a man of God that when you hold the mic and you teach the word of God as you minister one hour under your anointing somebody is waiting with an envelope to sow and he says sir grant me the privilege to tap into this grace Jesus prepared for 33 years for 30 years he made himself extremely valuable we've not reco recovered from the honor we accrue to him today question are you valuable in your place of work are you valuable right now they are downsizing people if they downsize you you are not valuable it's as simple as that are you rising to a place of value i told you there's no such thing as learned that that is our 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 civilization has made that concept extinct you are either learning or you are unlearned there's no such thing as i'm learned progressive growth progressive development and david served his generation pastors are you preparing to serve your generation business people are you preparing to serve your generation if you have a restaurant and um, in this day and age your food is still smelling smoke you are not serving your generation you are serving a generation that does not need your service are we together if you are a professional typist you are not serving your generation the generation that needed you has gone are we together are you getting what I'm saying you are a tailor are you serving your generation 
Don't say people are not coming. Why should I come? Can you serve me? Are we together? You are fixing phones. And I bring a phone of 200,000 and you look at me and say, hey, sorry sir, this is not the type we fix. I will not come again because what you said is that I have pegged myself. I have refused to develop myself to be able to provide services at that level. Are we together? Yeah. The minimum standard in the world is excellence. You must prepare to serve your generation. I preach in all kinds of places and I can tell you it's not just preaching by the anointing alone. You must understand the systems and the environment and the protocol of where you are going to. By the truth. Please, I'd like you to challenge yourself and say, I must be valuable. Say it. Stop envying people. Stop getting angry. Stop wishing. Rise up and be valuable. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life. That even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain be